And a very good evening, or good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you are in this fine world of ours. Um, welcome, it is episode Dean of the Pro Sense Network Live Show. I've just realised my hair looks an absolute mess because it's whole hot and sweaty here today. Um, oh, I wish that I had a ripped body. I wouldn't be wearing this T-shirt to cover up what lies beneath because it's so hot and muggy here but anyway um welcome 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 one and all uh we've got a, a nice little show lined up for you this week hope you're all well um of course last week we pre-recorded and we didn't do uh, the thing on the friday turns out we could have done because um i was queuing up for records and i was the only one there until about 4 30 in the morning absolutely stupid but there you go um, so before we meet our wonderful guests um, and co-hosts, uh, let me just go through the normal rigmarole. Of course, um, please do like, share and subscribe um, to the show. Uh, if you uh, know anybody else that hasn't watched this show that might benefit from from watching it, might get some fun or enjoyment from it, then please do send a link their way. Make sure they subscribe. And of course, uh, if you like the show, please do click the link. Uh, of course, we can't do the show unless uh, we have money. And you guys are absolutely brilliant. You, you pay us to do this it's crazy it's insane if you want to keep doing that of course you can there's the link it's also in the description below the video um, and you can also use YouTube's uh, super chat super sticker facility if you're watching live in the chat if you're watching after the show has been broadcast then you'll notice a button under the video that says thanks if you click that you can do the same sort of thing and donate some money that way and of course all funds that we receive go back into the show paying for all the services that we need to use to get a show out to you guys um you can catch us on all of uh, the social media channels we're on twitter we're on instagram we're on facebook which is where our main group is and of course we are right here on youtube the handle is as always uh, at prosynth network and finally if you have any questions for us uh, on the panel today then please do stick them into the chat and if you can preface them with a big capital Q that just helps us with our poor eyesight pick them out and uh, set them to one side ready to to throw at whoever they need to be thrown at um, so there you go that's all the formalities out of the way let's bring in um, our illustrious leader first of all Mr Ben Simpson how are you good evening uh, I'm all right yeah yeah, yeah I'm pretty good not Doing too well. bad at all yeah nice not little polo bad. shirt you've got on there yeah I've got, I went for the polo shirt very nice I tonight. need to get one of those it's available from uh, Viper Graphics, you know, supports the show as well. So, Indeed. you know, if you don't feel like donating any money, you want you want to get something back for your dosh, get, yeah. get a ProSynth Network t-shirt and get the name out there as well. Absolutely. You know? uh, yeah, so if you just get in touch with Andy at Viper Graphics, he, he'll sort you out whether you want a, a polo, a t-shirt or a hoodie. hoodie I think they're, yeah. the, they're the options at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty decent. How's, you, yeah. how's your week been? Pretty good, yeah. I, I was. Uh, I've made the plunge and ordered uh, a Mac Studio um, Ooh, uh, after you. much research and deliberation. I, I just really didn't know what to do. Like my first instinct was just right, right. Let's go head over heels in debt <laughs> and get <laughs> get the uh, you know the eight terabyte, hundred and twenty eight gigabyte ultra version and. Uh, and and then the more I looked into it, I, I thought, yeah, it is nice to have the top line, but if you're never going anywhere near that, yeah, <laughs> that threshold, you just, I, I'd just be personally wasting money. So mm. I went right down then to the Mac <laughs> Mini. <laughs> I went right down to the Mac Mini, and he even started at the Mac Mini eight gig, and thought, can I get away with this? And I thought, nah, no chance. So. It slowly crept up, and then I, I hit the sweet spot around the uh, Mac Studio Max. Okay. Just, just base configuration uh, for me, and um, what I'd looked into, base configuration of that. Yeah, me, me only, me only regret is I couldn't afford more on the hard drive, so I've only got a five hundred and twelve gigabyte hard drive, which right. sounds <laughs> horrific. <laughs> it sounds absolutely oh. horrific because I've got, I've got ten terabytes now in, in, in my Mac Pro. Uh, but my plan is is to get those MV, M, MVM, yeah, those little strip drives. Get them yep. in enclosures and uh, and uh, go through Thunderbolt with them. So yeah. uh, it's not going to be as fast as the onboard, but it's still going to be pretty speedy. That and yeah, th 
that'll do me i think indeed yeah well mm. um looking forward to you getting that and and reporting back on yes on how it works yes uh, have you got a delivery date on that yet uh, no, it just said um, towards the end of July. Oh. <laughs> well, then, so. well, that's not too far away, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It said, uh, I think it said like last week in July, start of August. So yeah. it's a fair way, like, but still. Well, um, I don't know. I'm going to be jumping in at some point in the next 12 months or so because my, my iMac is, what is it now, 2013 model, which I bought in 2014, I think. So it's it's a good seven, eight, nine years old. Um, so, but it's still going all right. And I said I upgraded the the internal drive to an SSD because it came with just a regular one. So that breathed some new life into it. Uh, and I already put the full thirty two gig of RAM that you can get in there in there. So it's always been kind of all right. It's, it seems fine, yeah. but yeah. I can't go beyond Catalina, and so therefore I can't get the latest version of Logic. Um, and so that I'm beginning to kind of hit those walls where, you know, I just can't have certain things because my machine is not up to date enough. But um, I don't know whether to go for another iMac, wait to see what they come up with with the large screen iMacs or whether to go Mac Mini and a monitor or Mac Studio. Uh, we shall see. But there mm. you go. It'll be interesting to to see how we go on there. Anyway, thanks for that, Ben. Um, we don't yeah, have any no Kent with us uh, this week because Kent's not feeling too well. So if you are watching Kent, hello, lots of love, Mwah. and uh, yes. hope you feel better soon, mate. And uh, um, yeah, we missed your show yesterday. I, I was upset, like, twiddling my thumbs. I'm normally doing something on a Thursday night, and that's what it was. So um, hope you feel better soon, mate, and uh, we'll see you soon. But we do have two wonderful guests for you. Now, we were going to have, um, I'm going to build them up and then bring them back down to earth. We were going to have the guys from Sonicware on the show today. But unfortunately, yes. due to un uh, unforeseen circumstances uh, beyond our control and beyond their control, uh, they're, they're not able to make the show this week. But they have promised that they will absolutely come on the show as soon as it is completely possible. Is that somebody? Is that me? What on earth is that? Something's just flying over my house. Um, we we have a, a squad. We have a squadron of AH-64 Apache helicopters about seven miles away, and they often do low passes over the house. So I apologise for that. You can blame the uh, Royal Army Air Force for that one. Um, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, Sonicware. Um, so can't be with us unfortunately. So if you are looking forward to that, I'm really sorry. I was looking forward to it as much as anyone. Um, but um, we will get them on as soon as is absolutely possible, and hopefully they'll have maybe something to show us in terms of a prototype uh, sample trick. But instead, we have not one, but two Michaels. One of them's a doctor, yes. one of them isn't. I wonder what, which one. Let's go to the one that's in the darkness, doing his best Bill Bailey. Dr. Mike Metley, good evening. Hello, time... all you nice people in the computer. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awfully good to be back. Good, good, good. How are you? Um, how am I what? Uh, how you doing? Oh, uh, how am I doing what? No, uh, it's been it's been a crazy little while. Uh, you guys probably saw last month that Bukes announced two books. Yeah. Um, the uh, the one that we're currently working on is the 50th anniversary of Roland. Mm. And that's due to be out at the end of the summer. Uh, it's a big book. It's going to be the biggest title we've ever published, and um, it's been, it's been work, but it's been it's been fun. We've we've gotten all kinds of crazy insights and so on and so forth. Um, music's going okay. I actually played a live show about uh, three hours ago wow, um, nice. on Second Life. Uh, they're celebrating their nineteenth anniversary, and I've been playing those celebrations cool. since the eleventh, mm -hmm. and had had a good time. Um, good people who don't know i do these live ambient improvs but then over them i also make up stories and tell stories to the audience with uh with the music as a backdrop gotcha. so that was kind of fun um and other than that you know radiospiral.net is going strong and um uh you know there's never enough sleep there's never enough money welcome to the human <laughs> yeah, race indeed well great to and, have you here by the way you stink for starting the Mac conversation while I was off stage. Just <laughs> yeah. coming back to that, just saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, look, it's, it's great to have you back. Um, as always, we look forward to your uh, input here. And we've got another Michael um, who is uh, closer to me than he probably is to you. I don't know how far away Colorado is from uh, New York City. 
What's that? He's, 2000, he's 3000? slightly further away from you. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost 2,000 miles from where we are. Yeah, well, wow. he's over there in New York City. His name is Michael Whalen. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I, I, I feel like I, I, I was on like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so to uh, to talk about you the, were uh, the, I was and ex everyone just calm down, Doctor uh, <laughs> Doctor. What, what's your name? And we Ben, we are so coming back to the Macintosh conversation. But uh, but yeah, no, it's great to be back. Uh, love the show. I think I'm the only person on this continent with this T-shirt for now. I, I wear it. I wear it proudly, and people are like, "What's that?" Was, well, I paid seventy dollars in shipping to get this. Oh, thank you guys. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, so imaginary trains came out, it's done incredibly well. And then I did my show, uh, at Emmy app on the 22nd of April. Uh, and the big news is, uh, with actually with Robbie's help, um, the, uh, the concert's going to be on the, uh, sound on sound YouTube page coming up soon. And it's actually going to be on television here in New York on PBS, and nice. uh, and we have a live album. My very first live album is going to come out the uh, the eighth of July. Um, and then I have five other albums that I'm working on over the next two years. And uh, the one that I'm the the one I'm really excited about sort of started as sort of a lark, and now it's turned into like one of the coolest things I think I've ever worked on. It's um, so I started with very very basic keyboards the idea was I, I all i have is an electric piano and i can use one synth per song mm -hmm. so and then i send the tracks to uh michael brook who if you guys know he's a wonderful guitarist and composer he's worked with brian eno and he's worked with a lot of people michael is a genius so he did guitar tracks and then uh then i sent the tracks to india to a guy named karsh kali who is a, a genius he, he does acoustic percussion. He does electronics. He is a DJ. He is a producer. He's a mixer. And he put down some really cool stuff. And right now, the tracks are in California with uh, Michael Manring is doing bass. Okay. And uh, yeah, the bass is going to be great. And then Jeff Oster is going to do trumpet. And the record is just going to be incredibly cool. So doing that and then um, actually getting ready for my next electronic project, which looks like it's going to be a combination of electronics and Wait for it, orchestra. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Look forward to hearing that. Super. Yeah. It's I mean, be cool. I see. So, yeah, you. You. Because I forgot you're on uh, not that long ago. I, I don't think I was on that one because I was that no. one. I can't remember when that was. No. But, um, of course, we we spoke just the other day, and see, I can't get rid of you. I just I know, you're always I know, there. I know. I just I'm, I I, I yeah. hang around. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're like a bad I'm smell. So <laughs> you're like you're like a bad smell. I hate this. Uh, no, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to come and just and hang out and and talk tech, especially on a week that's relatively slow. So then we can yeah. goof around and we can talk about Ben's Macintosh. So it'll be indeed, good. <laughs> absolutely. Well, there we go. Let's go. We'll go for. for up and uh, I've just seen that Kent is in the chat room, so let's all give uh, oh, Kent a wave. Hope you're yeah. feeling so uh, better soon, mate. And uh, yeah, take care of yourself. Um, and we're getting back. We can do a royal wave. We could possible. do. We could do one of these. We we'll do the royal wave. Yeah. Elbow, Hello. elbow, wrist, wrist, wrist. That's elbow, it. Elbow, <laughs> wrist, wrist, wrist. Uh, you know better than we do. Yeah. Normally, the do. royal wave round here at the moment is. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Right. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. It's as, as Michael said. Um, it's a little bit of another slow news week this week because obviously we're still in that post Nam <coughs> lull. Uh, things will probably start to heat up again. Uh, maybe just beyond the summer. I don't quite know how things are working. Um, so that we might... means we're doing this show for the lull. Yeah, for the lulls. We're doing a, indeed. We're, we're doing a we're doing a lull show, and and, and just and just at the moment where I'm thinking like Ben about pulling the trigger and getting the Mac Studio, like we we were talking that you know they're coming out with an, the next processor, they're coming out with the M2, and I'm like, will you guys just calm down, please? Can we just catch up a little? <laughs> just everybody, just calm down. But I I I think I'm gonna follow Ben in a month or two, and I'm gonna. Mm. Uh, blow up my visa card and see what happens so yeah, yeah. <laughs> we shall see at the moment i'm I'm still waiting for i've got an engineer supposed to be coming out my boiler died okay so we that's what heats our hot water we don't, obviously don't need heating at the moment but it heats our hot water and i apologize for the RAF going over my house again um 
and that that blew up and we're supposed to have an engineer at this week uh, because we're heating our water up using electricity and of course electricity at the moment is very very bloody expensive so i'm not entirely sure what i'll be able to afford or not jesus boys Give <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not Actually, shutting the window for anyone, glad, so just be glad. No, but, be... but yeah, but Robbie, if they stop over your house, like Robbie, we know you're inside. It, if they no, stop no, and do that, it's not good. It's bad. It's yeah, funny and, that they it, do you know, hover, and, and it could be the black helicopters. You know, the the silenced oh, ones yeah. that are coming to take oh. you away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, Robbie, what color are the helicopters? What color are they? Are they are they black? They're no, well, they're black and green, dark, that kind of dark green. Yeah. Well, okay, then you're yeah, all Apaches. right. They're Apaches. Then you're, so then you're all right. They're sinister uh, looking things. <laughs> yeah, no. I just find it amusing you guys are all talking about how old your Macs are. I'm actually doing this show on a 2010 Mac Pro. Um, it's rocking Mojave. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing oh, as almost as old as the desert as well. I'm doing absolutely fine. I do, yeah. I do actually. I just got a used uh, Mac uh, M1 Mini that I'm mm -hmm. going to be playing with just to sort of see how well Apple Silicon sits with me. Yeah. But uh, you know, down the line, I mean, now that they've got the M2s and those little laptops, my my laptops are ancient as well. Yeah. And it's 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 going to be time. Well, the M2 Mac Pro got announced today or released today, didn't it? So, yep. Um, yep. And Ben, somebody's it? asking how your birthday was. Oh, it's very good, very, mm. very good. I, I mean, I've not been anywhere for a while. We're not being well, but uh, I, I had a little uh, day trip out to New Brighton of all places. Oh, yes. Don't know if you know that. It's just over the other side from Liverpool, over the other Liverpool. side of the Mersey. Very nice. And, uh, Did you get yeah. a ferry? No, <laughs> no, I didn't do anything. I got out the van, sat on a rock. Watch okay. me dog, watch me dog wee on some fellas back on the beach <laughs> twice. <laughs> oh, I gotta oh, love it. Oh, brilliant. Yes, we're taking so, the high road here today. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, no, no, uh, but, but, it, it, but you have these moments with your dog where you're like, okay, if I stop the dog, I'm going to stop something that's really funny, but I probably should stop the dog because it's not good. No, I'm not going to stop the dog because I just want to laugh. It'll be good. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, sweetie. Go. That's all good. Uh, oh, God. I'm getting worried here because there's more. There's more helicopters in there. There's something's going. They're down. circling your house, Robbie. They're yeah. There's not been a, a zombie breakout or anything. Has not there? yet. No. Right. No. Well, well I read an article in the newspaper the other day about a. Um, or was it an article? Or was it? I, can't, I saw something somewhere. I'm not going to say where. About uh, a, a few, uh, somebody who prepares bodies, uh, you know, before they're buried, and apparently he ties their shoelaces together so it make the zombie apocalypse a bit of a laugh. <laughs> yes, that's what we need. Oh. Somebody on the inside. Oh. <laughs> oh. That was right. I, I, I would want somebody to do that to me, just in case. Um, oh. Anyway, there we go. So um, I do have a question before we go in. Um, there was a couple of questions actually. Uh, first of all. Um, Homegrown wants to know if there's going to be a full DVD physical release of your Emmy app performance, Michael. I think it's adorable that people want <laughs> DVDs. I really do. I'm sending you like an emotional <laughs> hug and going, hi, do you have any idea what it would cost to do that so I could sell <laughs> eight so, copies of it? So the, the answer it, is no. In short, the no. Answer, no, but it it's it will be available uh, or it is available um, on YouTube in 4K. It is so stream it. There you go. <laughs> and I do like physical products. Um, I must admit, but yeah, stream it 4K YouTube. Any chance of, of laser discs? Asks. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, doctor, doctor with the question. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate now, it. Now, do you know it's coming back? I tell you, it's going to come back. Yeah, really? um, are we, uh, Robbie? Are we, ho yeah, Mister? You know, he he he's my friend with the CX5M. He's like, I know it's coming back. I can feel yeah, it. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've just laid this downstairs, be, waiting for a player to play. We're with. all we're all going to go back to oscilloscope test equipment. And we're going to record <laughs> it in mono on there wire recorders. There it is. Um, there it is. That's it. Lady Aptitude, uh, who's got who's releasing some great stuff on Bandcamp at the moment. Um, she wants to know, is that an uh, orc hit from Miami Vice that drops at the beginning of the opening, or the end of the opening credits? Uh, yes, well, it's not from Miami Vice, it's from a Fairlight. It's the orc, uh, orc 2 stab, the classic Stravinsky Clark. stab. Um, so, yeah, that is that one. I had to put it in because I, I wrote that music. So I just thought, well, you know, trademark and all that. So, yeah, well. it is a Fairlight <laughs> Orc 2 that's in there. Um... 
we'll have some more questions coming up later but if you um <laughs> yeah wagyu wants to know, not wagyu synth addict wants to know if you can have the uh, the concert on umatic tape um, yeah. oh lordy so well, uh, we i actually have a story about umatic there was a moment where i was getting out of the three quarter inch video thing and I was so happy to do so that I put my three quarter inch machine, I took it down the elevator in my old studio on 38th Street, and I left it on the street in a, a, a brief but very powerful ceremony where it was like, hi, get the F out of here. B -b -b Bye. <laughs> yep. And that's, yeah, that was the moment where I switched over to all quick time, and now we're done. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I took a, I took a whole box full of uh, my VHS pre-recorded you know movies on cassette to <coughs> to our local recycling center where they have a container that is uh, especially for distributing to charity stores so you know goodwill stores you can leave your stuff in there it will go to a goodwill store and be sold on and they get their money for it so I took this big ass box of I had the Indiana Jones box set from you know the the 80s and the back to the future box set and uh, three um, box sets of Star Wars in different, you know, uh, yeah. it did, there was the THX remasters, there was the originals, there was, and they, I, I, I got all of these on disc now. I don't need them anymore, and I took them to give them to a charity shop, and they said no, they don't want them. They can't sell them for love nor money. So I literally had yeah. just tipped them into a skip, only to see just the other day there's a rental copy, a sealed rental copy of Back to the Future One sold for stupid money, and I'm thinking, oh maybe I should. Yeah, have just how spent many of yours eBay. were sealed? Oh, none of them were sealed, yeah. and they were all and well watched. Then the skip was the right place. Probably for was, probably. No, but the it only, just broke the my only heart. VHS we have only two sets of VHS tapes. The ones that had children's videos and children's movies because uh -huh. my daughters don't want them thrown away yeah. and then we have a cabinet where we recorded as it was played week by week the entire five-year run of babylon five oh, wow. ah. and, Ooh. and Ooh. you know that's like that's like a hundred pounds you know the, the, of, of tapes that can be replaced by like what one dvd box set i think yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy, uh, absolutely. And talking of, of uh, I know we're, we're not really talking about the news, but we're, it's okay. We're filling. Um, <laughs> Kate Bush, we're of course, great. We're less filling. He's <laughs> great. Kate uh, Bush, of course, has soared to number one in the charts here in the UK and all around the world, doing very. Excuse me again. Uh, doing very well um, in, in well, just everywhere because of running up the hill and running up that hill and being featured in Stranger Things. People are cashing in on this, of course, on eBay, and they're selling their cassette copies of Hounds of Love as seen in Stranger Things. And they're going for, like, you know, I've seen £400, £500 <laughs> for a, a an original cassette. Yesterday, I saw for sale, somebody had found or had got the exact model of Sony Walkman that Max has in Stranger Things. It's a W09, oh. I believe. Oh, yeah. In, in really, really nice condition. And they were selling it, not with a copy of Hands of Love, but um, the whole story, which was her kind of compilation best of at the time. So, yeah. and, they, and it had 88 bids on it. And the top bid, when I last looked, was 8,220-something pounds. Oh, it, was British, it was over $10,000. Uh, British people are crazy. British people no, no, are it was, crazy. It was no, in America. No, no, no. It's it was in America. British people. It's no, it's the oh, whole, oh, 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 it's the fine. whole eBay culture. It's just bananas. Yeah, it's nuts. It's all right. Fine. It's, I take it, it all was back. Just, you know, I just, America. I am so glad, I, guys. I am so so glad that that just hasn't found its way to synthesizers yet. <laughs> <laughs> You wait till Stranger Things uh, features a synthesizer. No, that, okay, so I, Robbie, I actually, <laughs> on this topic, I have something that's actually going to slowly turn us back towards the point, which is I heard a story that running up that hill, uh, you know, because, you know, everyone talks about Kate Bush and the Fairlight, is that, like, m most of that song of the Fairlight sound she uses are stock sounds. Is that a true story? Pretty much, yeah. Yep. Wow, all wow. Okay. Yep. So all... all as far as I know, the, the best to the best of my knowledge, um, the drone sound that starts the track and goes all the way through is the cello sample, which is used as a kind of cello within the sh song itself, but um, stuck through a couple of reverbs and then just kind of like a, on on a just a constant drone type thing. So it's 
they sampled, I think, the tail end of it and then just looped it. Um, oh, like a right. frozen reverb. Like a frozen reverb tail yeah. of this cello yeah. sound. Which and in then, 1985 was actually kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I watched... Yeah, that, that's um, true. Well, that's Warren true. Hewitt, who does produce like a pro channel on YouTube, did a whole episode just the other day. And he spoke to some of the people that were involved in, in the recording of the song. And they were explaining how they, you know, they did various things. But yeah, um, the, the drums were Lin Drum. Um, yep. the, the the cello was Fairlight. The, apparently, there's a DX7 in there as well, which I wasn't. You know, I, I, you, wow. it's not obvious um, as you do, as you do. But it, well, again, do. it was 1985, so but yeah, pretty much mostly um, Fairlight. So uh, well, I'm taking because I'm taking this Fairlight out to Cambridge tomorrow. I fully expect people, everybody, to be coming up to me and say, "Oh, can you play?" You know, yeah. uh, running up that hill. And I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> so there you go. Um, but yeah, you should, uh, have, you should have prepared that earlier. Really, come on, you could have gone well, and, and wow. Yeah, you really, was. yeah. You know what? I'm with Ben on this. You probably could have spent like a whole week on this, well, and just know, done the whole bloody thing. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So what I can do is there is a. I'm, I'm waiting for him to just say f off. You know. No, well, no. I'm going to say there, there's a guy on uh, not YouTube uh, on Patreon. Uh, he goes by the name of Reverb Machine, yeah. and he does some great posts. He breaks songs down into their component parts, shows you how to recreate the sounds, and uh, using software plugins. And he uh, has a whole bunch of sounds that he, you know, sells, and, and there's, a, there's a free pack in there. And he did one on running up that hill. So I've got all of the MIDI, and I've, of course I've got a fair light, you know, in software. So I might be able to recreate it that way. Oh, right. yeah. But yeah. Um, certainly on the Series Three, I don't have any of the files in there, and it would have, it would take a long while to put it together. So yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah, I probably should. I will just have to make do. The only the only thing I've got on the Series Three that I can play is the Pet Shop Boys. It couldn't happen here, which I've got the original files for, and that's pretty mind blowing. So that's yeah. cool. So, that's yeah. cool. so I have a question, Robbie. Is a Series 3 a real Feralite? Mm -hmm. Or do you oh have to go back to the 2 for it to be legit? If you're going to have oh your cred, if you're going to oh have boy. your cred, is a 3 okay? No, a 3 is okay, but the 2 is the classic. I was just going to say, because, you know, somebody's going to end up putting a, a Feralite 2X on eBay, and it's going to go for, I don't know, $3 million. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am waiting for one. There's not many. I mean, actually, um, a friend of mine has just picked up a, a Series 2. Well, it's a Series 1 upgraded to a 2. Um, and I have no idea where they got it from because I normally know where most of these things are, certainly in the UK. Um, so it'll be interesting to chat with her tomorrow and find out what, what that's all about. But there's one there. Look, there's, that's, a, that's a 2X just there and with the keyboard just there. Unfortunately, uh, she's had her voice cords ripped out, so she can't sing at the moment. Um, but hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Anyway, wow. right. Let's let's do some news, shall we? We're, we're like half an hour in. We haven't even spoken about anything. Of well, any yeah, you know, we'll take a, we'll take a fifteen minute break and get through the news stories. <laughs> of the week. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess the the biggest news this week was one of the, again one of the worst kept secrets in uh, music technology over the last few weeks. And I'm just waiting until that guy's off the screen. So, um, so <laughs> I cut Scott Storch, who's been, um, promoting this for our guy. It's just a weird looking guy. Just like the way he's playing, he looks like a puppet. It's very odd. Anyway, Akai, um, here he is. Akai have released, um, it's just, yeah, it's the, uh, MPC key. You have to really think about that. MPC key. I've been saying MPC K all week. So the MPC Key 61. It's an MPC with a keyboard. Essentially. You know, let's 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 not beat around the bush. But it's it's a it's a nice keyboard. Um and it has uh say all of the MPC functionality plus a 61 note uh keyboard. Um does I don't it really... have does it have aftertouch? It has channel aftertouch, <laughs> not poly aftertouch. And the pads have aftertouch as well, as you can Come see Come on, here. Michael, you know me. Yeah, um, I do. But it's got, I do. Uh, it's got a quad-core ARM processor with 4 gig of RAM, 7-inch multi-touch screen, assignable Q-Link knobs, velocity and aftertouch sensitive drum pads in the classic MPC style, um, onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, 61-note uh, semi-weighted uh, semi keyboard with aftertouch, 
and um, lots of connectivity at the back as you can see there you've got um, all the audio outputs you've got eight cv gates you've got four discrete line outs uh, high-end mic preamps with premium adda converters um, and you can put your own audio interface uh, plug that into the back as you can with the the, the mpcs themselves it's uh, retailing for in the UK about 1700 so I think that's about 1999 in the US roughly it comes with a whole bunch of plug-in instruments I'm sorry I'm gonna have to phone the RAF up again um, it might be the Americans actually I need to get out probably is probably yeah is. yeah no that's, <laughs> that's the RAF that one um, plus lots of plug-in instruments which of course we we've seen before on uh, the NPCs themselves so you know it's a nice big healthy package um as the actress said to the bishop um uh -huh. <laughs> so uh there's no no oh, point right. the, the, he really does look freaky doesn't he? he yeah i mean you can't you know argue with the guy he's got grammys coming out of his um yeah every, but he looks like, orifice yeah well never mind yeah it just looks mm. um but look it's an npc with a keyboard essentially um do we need one well you know me and and user interface um, and the first thing that got me when I looked at this was the the people who use NPCs are used to having them flat on the table right in front of them. And holding your, um, yes, thank you, bedroom explorations. <laughs> <coughs> but um, holding your hands out in front of you, anybody who's tried to work with a really large keyboard stack knows holding your hands out in front of you, you're spending a lot of muscle effort maintaining the position of your arms and so i have a funny feeling that that a lot of the people who are used to working with npcs are going to find it fatiguing which is mm. I, I know it's like the last thing in the world that anybody is thinking about but ergonomics are major um and uh you know th but but with things coming back into style that actually use real keyboards you know maybe it's a thing mm -hmm. I, it's fu it's funny because um many years well, say many years ago i'm trying to th i'm trying to think now it was over 10 years ago they released their first um keyboard controllers akai and it, you know the yep. you had the mpk the mpks i had a i had an mpk 61 yeah. at the magazine i've got I used... a 49 and an 88 here and they're really well built and very nice things and they got the pads on them yeah um, but you know what <laughs> they they only have eight sliders true True. I won't. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's just so not cool. But this one has none. <laughs> this has no sliders. Oh, that's um, even better. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> but um, they they released that many years ago, and it was obviously it was just a control, and it came with a whole bunch of maps for different uh, applications. But you could take that and stick it in and use it with Ableton, or use it with Reason, or use it with Cubase, and it had a map for it. Um, and it kind of worked all right. And so my, my, my son loves his, um, but I, I think this is something they should have done years ago. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure now is the right time for this because uh, I don't know many hip hop producers, but when I see hip hop producers interviewed, they've generally got a keyboard workstation, usually a Yamaha or a Roland, and then they have the MPC and they use these two things in tandem they've been doing that for years so why now why this now why build something like this when you can go out and buy a uh, an mpc and then get a decent controller keyboard of your own choosing and your yeah, own size yeah robbie i i i can't agree more because i think there was i don't know if you guys saw it on on apple but they did this wonderful uh, documentary with Mark Ronson, the producer, yes. and he, he was talking about his love of the MPC and talking about how like 90s hip hop records were put together. And, you know, it's really interesting, like the tools have changed, but like the philosophy around the building of beats and that stuff hasn't changed that much. Mm. I mean, whether you're using, you know, an MPC or Fruity Loops or, you know, Ableton or whatever, like the philosophy hasn't changed. And so I, last year I went and I got myself an Akai uh, MPC studio and I love it. I use it as an alternate controller all the time on Logic. I, mm -hmm. I, it's terrific. Um, but I wish more manufacturers ask the question, should this happen or do people need this? Because I don't think people do 
a lot of research on like what, you know, I mean, the first thing everyone's going to say is, well, you make it cheaper. Everything has to be cheaper. Uh, okay, fine. But in terms of functionality, uh, I, I totally agree with you. Like, I, like who is going to run out and buy this? And it is nice that a lot of these libraries come with it. I think that's, I think that's nice. But the library is only as useful as how much you're going to use it. So I think... It, it, this is a weird one because this was a terribly kept secret. Uh, everyone <laughs> knew for months that this was, this was coming. And I think it's also really interesting that not much happened at NAM with this. And they sort of waited for that beat after NAM to kind of mm. do their thing publicly with it, which is something that I have said to some of my friends in the wake of NAM that nam might be turning into that film festival like sundance where nothing really happens at sundance anymore because all the deals are made before and everyone just goes to park city to announce a movie deal mm. and like so is nam becoming the same thing everyone knew about the oberheim everyone knew about the third generation everybody knew about like well, you know a lot of a lot of the bigger things that were happening well the the oberheim wasn't a secret <clears throat> no and I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that the video with Dave Smith got out when it did, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there's that. No, I'm, what I'm thinking is that if people come to this, uh, this gizmo, uh, they're going to be coming from the keyboard side. They're not going to be coming from the, from the production side. Mm. Uh, you're going to have um, these people who are, you know, they may be great keyboardists. They may, be, uh, they may have nice studio setups of a more traditional sort. And somebody may say, you know, um, it'd be nice if you could do some producing, do some MPC stuff. And um, the uh, so the 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 possibility, uh, you know, uh, is they'll try it just so that they have the tools at hand. Yes. And mm. Kosh Dukai says this is the first interesting MPC to me. Po probably being a keyboardist has something to do with it. And that's exactly my point. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I, I don't think anybody is going to come to this thing from the MPC side. I think mm. everybody's going to come to it from the keyboard side. Yeah. And besides, you know, it's got Mellotron sounds in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's not take anything away. Akai have rejuvenated the MPC in recent years, and I thought they'd lost it. I thought that the the, the poor decisions they'd made some years ago and the fact that Native Instruments had, had taken over, really, with Machina and Machina Plus and that, that they just you know they they'd let the the market slip away from them but they've come back with these uh, the the uh, this is the force the mpc force the mpc live and everyone that i know that's got one really really rates it and I, it's not my th i i used to work for akai as a freelancer doing sound design with steve and so i've had a couple of mpcs still i've never ever used one in anger right it just doesn't work with my brain sorry um doesn't work with my brain so i've never really gelled with it but i understand when i see people use it i'm blown away by you know what they can do with this thing it's, it's just incredible somebody else's workflow baby yeah exactly That's, and, it you know, it's it's always fun to watch somebody else's workflow and it, that's what I it comes. I, and I, I, I agree with Mike. I think that's what it comes down. It comes down yeah. to is this your workflow? And I, and I think Mike makes an ex excellent point about coming from the keyboard side versus coming from like you know like the production sort of hip hop beat side. Uh, I mean, in my closet, I don't keep a lot of old gear, but for reasons that sort of I don't understand, I still have my old MPC sixty. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I pull it out and occasionally going into that workflow and I, I love it. I yeah. just, it just, it just makes me think differently. And, and I, I love starting tracks with that sometimes. So I, I, I agree with Mike. I think this might be a workflow thing. And if you're a keyboard player and you're a more traditional person, this might actually be a good setup for you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now it, they have brought out, um, a, a a bunch of extra plugins that don't come with the the standalone mpcs and this is uh, this is these here uh, six brand new studio quality plugins stage piano stage ep organ studio strings fabric collection and opx4 i'm not i think fabric that... collection is yeah. that like the latest from vera wong 
Um, nice. Are we going to see that Absolute, runway week? Or? Uh, we've nice. got Sonic Tapestry with the fabric collection, it says over here. There's a fabric piano, a fabric electric piano. Yeah, there's... Uh, okay, but, fine. Okay, fine. It's, but it's... I will say this, and some I've, this. So there's been a, a, a pretty healthy discussion on the uh, ProSynth Network Facebook page regarding this. I put up the the announcement, and then there's lots of people have added in. This was interesting. If you want those six new instruments to go into your MPC Live, for example, it's going to cost you another five hundred dollars to buy wow. those six plugins. That can only be used, in, I believe, in your your MPC, um, and lots of people are not happy about that. It, it you know, it's it's a lot of money, um, so that's an interesting thing. If you want to, you know, benefit from, I mean, maybe they'll bring them down. Maybe they're just making them as exclusive as they can for their new toy. Um, it's an interesting one. Ben, you're sat there scratching your beard. What are you thinking? <clears throat> I, I I'm not really sure. I, 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 I think I reacted like this when it first popped up. It was like, it, it, I'm like up and down with it. I'm like, wow, that's that's quite good, that. And then I'm thinking, no, nah, well, you can just plug a USB keyboard in the other one. Mm. But then they bundle in these these plugins, uh, which cost £500 on their own. So, if I, you know, if I, I have toyed with the idea of getting MPC for a while. I've tried... Uh, Machina, I've tried uh, Electron, none of them kind of gel with me. So I thought oh, I'll try an MPC maybe one day. I know Kent's got one as well, mm. but this this could tempt me. I, I've never really had a, a successful working relationship with any kind of workstation. It's always been individual things, so I, I've never found. Like my, the, my old way of working used to be with the QX1 and, and, and mm -hmm. sound modules. And then I went straight from that really to the Atari ST and sound modules. So I've never really spent, like I've never really produced like bodies of work using a workstation. Yeah. it's, a, it's a, I've got one, I've meddled with it for a bit and then I've ended up with something completely different. And I, I've always thought that that'd be quite a, an appealing thing, you know, to... Just be able to sit at one machine and it have all your focus uh, and your, no distractions. And uh, and this is, like, really good for that, uh, mm. by the looks of things. And also, it's a return to sampling keyboards for Akai. They've not done a sampling keyboard, <laughs> keyboard for a very long time. Fair point. Uh, and well, and now that. we're back. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. quite nice because we've been moaning for years. Like, why, you know, it, it, why has a sampler got to be for like the, you know, the MPC market? You know, with the pads mm. on it and that. Why can't we have samplers that are rack mounted or keyboards again? And this is definitely going down that route. It's, but it, it, it's polyphonic aftertouch as well. That's another. It, that's another cross against it because. You know, the poly aftertouch is, is getting more and more support. It's everywhere. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm just smiling all over my foolish face because I can remember having a celebratory drink with Craig Anderton at NAMM one year because <laughs> Roland actually brought back some kind of aftertouch on one of their keyboards. Right. We had really, yeah. for a while there, people don't remember this, but for a while there, it looked like Aftertouch was going away forever yeah. for wow. anything for anything under $2,000. Yeah. But I remember and, saying on this show, um, not a huge amount of time ago, why doesn't anybody make any polyphonic Aftertouch keyboards? And then all of a sudden, now we've got ASM, we've got Waldorf, uh, you know, it's it's now back in fashion again which is yeah, great well you know i'm i'm not going to argue with that but again that's materials technology um mm. you know the the profit t8 was a monster to keep calibrated but yep. asm built a mechanism that's you know it's strong it's stable uh it's reliable as far as i can tell people say that these things are built like tanks and those are folks who use them a lot harder than i use mine mm. um so you know i think it was just an idea that from the technology side time uh it's time had come i do want to say though that akai has not released one product that i would really actually that i could really use um when i do my ableton live stuff i actually have three ableton control surfaces 
in front of me. I've got a Launchpad Pro, I've got a MIDI mix, and I've got an APC uh, Mini um, so that I can have 16 channels uh, of mixing right at hand. Um, and the APC Mini drives me crazy because it's got the old style three color um, LEDs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything else has gone RGB and it would really help me a lot if they would make an APC mini with RGB, RGB pads. But, mm. you know, now that I've asked for it on a public forum, it means it will never happen because <laughs> it's any <laughs> jinx that one. <laughs> jinx that one. Anyway, look, I mean, it's coming soon. I had to I don't know if it's available to order now, um, but it's uh, about 1700 UK, about 2000 US. Uh, whether you think that's worth it or not, I don't know. It's interesting. We'll see how it goes. I kind of, I, I, it's not for me, but I kind of like what the, they've done. It. I just think they've done it a bit too late. Myself. Mm. There you go. I, I can't see me buying one, but I do mm. like the idea of it. I think, I, I think that it'll be the ones that are just setting out. Really, that uh, trying to look at which they want to make music. They, they they're not sure which way to go with it. They're in a music shop, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> they're watching a YouTube video more likely. They see that and think, oh, yeah, that's everything in one. And I think that's who they're going for, I think. Yeah, I, th I think Mike if, was right before when he said, like, the... This will the, go the for somebody who wants an MPC and thinks, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll need a keyboard as well. Now I can just get it all in one year. Yeah. Yeah, or so, on, yeah. actually more, it's it's the keyboardist who's saying, you know, uh, or, I've yeah. met somebody who's doing great work with an MPC. Mm. There's an artist I've heard about who's doing great work with an MPC. Mm. You know, I wish I could try an MPC, but I'm not going to spend tabletop space and money on something that I might not like. Mm. Whereas something like this, it's a keyboard with nice sound libraries on board and a good semi-weighted action. And, oh, look, yeah. it's got 16 pads with the, uh, with the MPC workflow. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, let's go for that one. I thought it was interesting that our friend Mel Wesson, who is, and I'm sure you won't mind me saying this, he's, um, uh, what... <laughs> He's been around the game for a long, long while. So, yeah, he, he, he goes back. He was programming Fairlights. So he's looked at this and thought, hmm, this actually looks like a nice all-in-one thing. And he's more of a like a Moog modular guy. And, you know, but so, you know, when somebody like that expresses interest, it, you know, we'll ask him. He's coming on the show in a few weeks' time. Um, but, yeah, yeah, interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. MPC Key. 61 available soon at uh, all good music stores and maybe some bad ones too oh. um so let's see what should we talk about next oh this is one that mike brought to our attention um now you're gonna have to remind me is the company named bliss bliss it is bliss b-l-e-a-s-s -E -S -S. and yeah you want to say blee ass yeah but i, I believe do, it's yeah. i believe it's bliss but there you go they've got a new synth and it's free it's yes. free, I tells you. Uh, free for Mac, Windows, and for iPhone and iPad. It's a very simple, very flat interface uh, mon monophonic synthesizer um, with a, a nice filter. It's got Unison. Um, it's got FM in there as well. It's just it's just a really nice little thing. And it's, it's free of charge. I was messing around with it uh, last night and coming up with some some really interesting stuff. I was just yep. trying to see if there was a, a demo. Here we, here we go. Let's let's have a look at the demo video, shall we? It's completely free of charge. It's from Bliss. It's called the Monolith. Um, I've been using it on my uh, Mac, 
um, and just had lots of little fun with it. It's got a, it's got a dice on the front, so you can just randomise your patterns. I was going through that, and actually, it was getting more good stuff than there was bad stuff. Uh, it's it's a really nice little thing. Let's go to Mike, um, who is a, a big fan of this, and obviously uses them on well, uh, his iPads. Yep, um, I, I'm a big fan of Bliss. Uh, I I have pretty much everything they've ever released. That's not only because their stuff sounds good and they always throw in some extra little fun features to to take sounds in weird directions, but it's also that flat interface. It's real easy to read and mm. it's easy to follow along with on you know Mac or Windows, but uh, on iOS, you know when you're talking about the tactile uh, uh, response. I would much rather work with with a Bliss Instruments um, UI mm-hmm. uh, than almost anything else. Um, the iPad touch screens is really where skeuomorphism falls down. I don't want a product that that you know looks like an LA two A because an LA two A is designed you know for you to reach out and handle actual hardware. Mm. These flat interfaces are just, they're so much easier to work with. They're so much easier to see your way around. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm a big fan. Um, you know, there are there are very, very few companies that I'm as loyal to as Bliss when it comes to making music on iOS. Mm. And Guys, free. How do you, yeah, how do you yeah. argue with free? Exactly. Get it. Someone, you, like you know, it, Mike, it. Mike, someone is actually going to argue with you about free. It's like, it's not free enough. Could it be more free? Uh, but, um, <laughs> in, in, Don't in get getting re- me in, started. I know, I know. Everyone, everybody just calm down. But in getting ready for today's conversation, I downloaded, I, I, I agree. I think it's a terrific uh, synthesizer and I love the interface. Um, one of the things that drives me crazy um, and I'll <clears throat> I'll say the name Roland uh, about like new synthesizers. Like uh, I, I was talking to a friend about the uh, the Jupiter X and just just how things are designed, whether it's hardware or software. It, it, people go and they make things difficult. And in, in this environment, with the amount of technology and a design, and you really bring like a real sense of hey an actual person who's actually going to like be performing music and maybe they're recording. Hey, maybe they're even doing a live show. It's really nice to have an interface, which is really like there to help facilitate and empower your, um, your performance. It's, it's really nice. And, and that's one of the reasons why, um, as powerful as it is and as much, you know, incredible material as you get for very little money, I'm never going to use main stage just because it's yeah. not designed to be used on stage. It's just, it's, it, you know, unless you have a bunch of external controllers assigned to do all the stuff, you know, you don't want skeuomorphism on stage, uh, a, a Rhodes piano. You don't want a knob that you have to grab with a trackpad, Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so, you know, I'm, I'm just, and I know Ben, I know you use main stage a lot. Mm. But it's just that's so not me. I I couldn't do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, when I when I did my show in April, though, I did the entire thing in Logic. I didn't I didn't use Main Stage, and then I had another computer off stage where I was using Gig Performer because I I really Gig Performer I, I is a very nice piece of software. It's it's a very nice piece. Of, David has done a great job with it, and 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 I've been using it almost since the beginning, but. Um, I, I, I agree. I think for live, it's very, 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 you, you got to make some tough choices, especially when you have something that's very complicated, oh, but I, I'm sorry. I, I cut off Ben. Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry I, 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 I just cut off Ben too. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just both Michaels. Well, ben, both. ben, go, go, go. Ben. <laughs> I, I was just going to say when I go use on, main, when I on, use ben. main stage, I, I've got it connected uh, to one of the keyboards I've got it connected to is a Nectar Panorama P6. Oh, and those are nice. Got, that's got this like visual feedback thing on it. So the actual, uh, y- you know, you can flip uh, desktops on your Mac. Yep. I never look at the, never look at the main stage desktop. I boot it up at the start and then I never look at it again because I do everything off the screen on the, oh, on the. Oh, that's great. And, and uh, so there's, so there's a main stage template that Nectar has for the PCs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, live yeah. and learn. That's yes. that's actually really cool. When it I reviewed is, it, it for the magazine, they didn't yeah. have that yet. 
Oh, yeah, it's really good. It is really good. You don't need to look at the software. Once you've set it up, you don't need to look at it again. That's really. that's, that's great. Cool. That's mm. very cool. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But there you go. Sorry, I was just uh, having a look out the window because I was just trying to see what the hell's going on. I'm going to put my light on now so they can... They're not looking as long as anymore. as long as you don't have Cybermen marching down the street. Delete. Not yet. Delete. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> anyway, um, look. What, there's uh, not, not a lot more you can say about this thing. It's yeah. You know, it's 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 fun. Nice, it's, free, it's free. Go try it. Exactly. But I will warn you. I, I know why they're doing it free. By the way, mm. it's because it's a freaking gateway drug. Yeah. When yeah. you realize oh. how good this piece of software is. Um, they're going to separate you from about $120 for the iOS versions. And I have no idea what the, what the Mac Windows stuff costs. Wow. But, you know, when you, get into, when you get into this company, they've got about 20 different really cool <laughs> AUV3s and a couple of nice synthesizers, including a beautiful FM synth, by the yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, um, and, it, you know, it, taint the dress that gets you. It's the hat and the shoes. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> wow. And they've, wow. they've um, they do bundles as well, so you can yeah uh, yeah you can spend quite a bit if you really want to. But if you just want the odd one or two, the twenty bucks for you know a plug-in that works on Mac and Windows or iOS as well. They're um, like potato chips. Nobody eats one or two. There you go. Although I will say wow. this: start with the reverb. The reverb is a lot of fun, especially on iOS, because the tactile interface. Mm, there you go. Well, bliss.com, B-L-E-A-S-S, -S, but we're assured it's pronounced bliss. I uh, could we'll be wrong, but I'm not going to say bliss. -ass. Bli you know, maybe I made it up. Bli I'm not going to tell you. Bliss. 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 Anyway, B-L-E-A-S-S -S 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 dot com. I don't know. Um, but... Go and check that out and uh, sign up. All you got to do is just, there is a, you do have to give them your email address. Um, <gasps> but... Yeah, big deal. Um, so there you go. Bliss Monolith free. Go get it now. Um, you have been told. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, well, here's one. So we can get some juicy discussion out of this one, I am sure. So last week, as you know, we pre recorded the show on the Thursday to be broadcast the following day. <laughs> and we knew that something was going to happen. And we knew it had been leaked, um, but we couldn't talk about it until the day it was released, which was Friday. And, of course, we weren't live on Friday. But it was this uh, little baby here, the Jupiter 4, uh, part of the Roland Cloud. Um, it's And it's ACB. It's a plug-out, so you can put this into your System 8 if you want to or use yeah. it on your uh, I, desktop. I have a uh, question. But go for it, yes. Does it only have two voices? Because, no. like, the no. ACB Jupiter 8 only had four voices. <laughs> this so is does the ACB six. Jupiter 4 only have two voices? No, this no. is 16. Yeah, is it's, it? it's, re yep. it's really, it's really, it's, I, yep. yeah, I actually, I actually got this, like, within hours of seeing it, and I got it, it it's, they did a nice job with this. Yeah, really so nice. in software, it's up to 16, in the plug out, it's eight. So yeah, whatever you, you know, go for, it's more than the original it's, it's just so it's just so nice to see that they're still supporting plug outs and they're still using acb when it's appropriate exactly. we get a lot of people complaining that you know as as much as we love the flexibility of zencore the sounds just aren't quite there exactly whereas yeah. the acb stuff just nails it um and um it's it's nice to see that they're not letting this stuff go. Roland has a you know I've I've been like eating, drinking, and and sleeping Roland for the past like five months, and one of the things that you tend to notice if you step back and look at all fifty years is that if they have something that works, they they stick with it, and if yeah. they finally do set it aside, often they'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but they'll always add new stuff. They'll always yeah. add new stuff because because Mr. Kakahashi was famous for saying we don't chase ghosts. It is not our job to chase ghosts. We need that's why you're never going to see Roland make an exact replica of one of their famous old pieces because they they don't do it. Mm -hmm. More's the pity. More's the pity. But it is um, really, yeah. Yeah, I, admire, I, mean, I don't think so. I, I, I admire that's a topic that for discussion but, later. <laughs> yeah, I admire the ethos, but I, I think I think classic synths should come back. Yeah, uh, I think I think that I think what what uh, Oberheim have done with the OBX. Uh, that's and, not a that's not a no uh, that's not a real 
OBX. No, it's no, got, but it's yeah. got effects oh in it. It's yeah. got oh boy. It's an Here we go. LCD. It's oh got, boy. you know. You oh, know. I know it's oh different. I know it's different. But and that's oh, here the point. It is. And that's yeah. the point. They're different. They're updated. It's not as different as the Juno X's compared to the Juno 106, though. It's well, not yeah, there difference. is that. But but anyway, we'll come back to this. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a big fan of the four. Um, it's a really it's a really cool box. I mean, you know, they weigh a ton. But, you know, Roland knew how to build them. I mean, those those machines, most people don't realize they've got individual voice cards in them. So if you've got a voice that goes skunk, you can yank it. Yeah. Um, and while you're having it fixed, you can either swap it another card or you can have a Jupiter 3. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and uh, it, it's just um, they don't nobody builds them that way anymore. We can't afford to build them that way anymore. Yeah. Uh, they're great machines. Yeah, Ben, hmm. have you played with this? It did because didn't you have to? Because you got rid of your own cloud uh, I did, secretary. I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm also quite gutted as well that I got rid. I watched Starsky Car um, messing about with this, uh -huh. and he he loaded it into his System Eight, <laughs> and I also had a System Eight and sold it. So I'm oh. I'm like. Do, Doubly gutted. I, I'm actually thinking now that the system eight could have been really useful for me live, and I, yeah. I kind of sold it before I'd really give it a chance. I remember Chris. No like aftertouch. Saying... <laughs> no aftertouch. Yeah. No yeah, after that was touch. a thing. Get, yeah. Get the get the system eight M. Get the, or no system one M. Never mind. Oh, but I, I made a classic error with the, with the system eight because I did used to use it live, and I thought, oh, in this particular, it, it was the solo in Fade to Grey. And I was using a synth sound off main stage, and I didn't want to, um, at that particular point, I didn't want any sound coming out the system eight, so I turned the mixer down on oh, the, no. all, all the parts. And I, I started like to playing this solo thing and controlling the oscillator, <laughs> the, 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 the filter with, with, with the, uh, the, the cutoff and resonance on the on the system eight center into self oscillation, which went out through the, 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 it was outdoors as well. It was an outdoor gig with the line array and everything. It must've been, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> millions of Watts, <laughs> just, just like this self oscillating rumble, like caused a, a, an earthquake just outside of Blackpool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, so... I'm sorry, but Blackpool could use an earthquake. <laughs> wow. Very true. Wow. Very true. Um, <laughs> Mr. Whalen. Yes, sir. Do you? What do you think of this? Um, I, I know a lightning bolt is going to come and kill me after the next thing. I, I, because, you know, Dr. Mike has been spending so much time researching the role in history, getting ready for this book. And I, I have not been a Roland guy. I That's have not fine. been. Neither am I, yeah. which is one it of would, the reasons why right, I can everybody, edit this book. <laughs> everybody just calm down. Um, <laughs> but I will say that I think Roland has done a great job with the Roland cloud. I mean, if you take into account like all of the possible sort of the technical maze that you have to kind of navigate to just make this happen in a way that's going to get out to the widest number of people, I think they really have done a good job with it. Um, I, I'm i not particularly blown away by the hardware that they have been releasing over the last five or 10 years. Um, like, you know, uh, you know, back when I first started in this business in the late 80s, I worked in a studio where I got to play a Jupiter 8 every day. And, you know, we had a Juno 68. And then when I first built my studio, I had a System 100 for a long time. So, like, my my experience with Roland stuff is, like, with the big stuff, and then it just stops. Um, and then when I when I've gone and sort of tried things out or I've been in another studio or I'm doing a session for somebody and somebody says, Hey, you can do a pad on this thing. Um, I, I haven't been blown away, but I have, I have to say, I'm very happy that I got a rolling cloud account and I was really happy that they did this Jupiter four. Now Mike will probably be able to speak to this better than I can, but from my experience of playing actual hardware versions of the Jupiter, um, the the Roland Cloud version isn't 
like a is isn't like a reissue of of it it's like it's sort of like they're sort of like riffing on the idea of it exactly and, and that's what and they always do they, they right. always and, they start with the basic sound and then they riff on it they give you sequencing yeah. they give you better programming capabilities right. they put in effects um yeah, i so wish I, 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 I i i wish it was a a little warmer so because I mean, and Mike brought up the whole thing with like the old voice cards. And one of the things I used to love, especially about my system 100, which I, I, I miss it. That's one of those things you sell. I sold and I was just like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that because the thing was just so warm and the, the harmonic distortion, it was just so beautiful. And uh, the stuff now, the rolling cloud stuff is clean. And then you can dial in like the distortion, but it's not the same thing. And I just wish it was just a little... They can model it like a little warmer, but uh, but other than that, uh, you know, Robbie, the answer to your question is I think they've done a great job with this. Mm. I was, I was going to say on on the Jupiter Four, you've got this condition control, yep. and you've yep. also got a circuit mod control as well. So I guess that's their way of trying to get close to that, you know, the the old feel of that stuff. Um, it, it does. It, it sounds great. It, it yeah. does sound great. But I, I've cancelled. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, oh! Paul Artola types in chat. Doorbell. FedEx guy. Synth Gems One has arrived. Uh -huh. Whoa, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> we lost yeah. him for the rest of the. We've lost him for the rest of the show. What? What? You know. Uh, uh, yeah. You know. There's. There's always time for a plug, and I really appreciate Mike that you do that. I think that's really great. So. <laughs> you know what? It was it's subtle. Feeding my kids. <laughs> All right, everybody, just calm anyway. down. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, just I, calm down. You I know? just, th I just think with 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 the Roland Cloud thing, which I've cancelled my subscription for, I just think that they really need to sort the 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 patch management out on that because it's yes, it's the worst. It is yeah. the worst of anything. I've got like old software from. I don't know the two thousands that has got a better interface than that. It's just so yeah. dated and awful. It's just when well, you see and what... the reauthorization is something that that yeah. um, you know. I'm I'm just I'm I'm not big on subscription models for software, and and that's me, mm -hmm. and and um, you know I just. And I'm not enough of a Roland fan to want the Roland Cloud. You know, literally, all of the machines in Roland's last 30 years that I love have all been re-released as boutiques. And um, yeah, so I'm good. So mm. I'm I'm really good. But, Squirrel. <laughs> um, sorry, but, but I'm I'm actually I I prefer the cloud over the boutiques because I I had you know and, and you you alluded to this Mike about the the Jupiter Eight only having Vol uh, or the JP Eight only having four voices, which I just thought was an absolute travesty. How dare you try and sell me a product that's based on a Jupiter 8 and it only has four voices and yeah, then they couldn't have the audacity. It, they couldn't call it the JPO4 because then everybody would wonder why they had exactly. the audacity so to sell something it. that wasn't a Jupiter 4. So just don't do it. I mean, they had they even had the audacity in the manual. I say it's a manual. Unmitigated it's a sheet of paper audacity. folded in like a hundred different ways it's a bloody origami lesson but they had the audacity in that manual to say for the full jupiter 8 experience hook up another jp of uh eight Arr, come on that's just not fair what's that that's jp08 uh, in a box <laughs> got it on... ready to go back no <laughs> uh, no 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 i just got it um it was it, it showed up on uh it showed up on on uh one of the local local group sites for uh, very very little money and i grabbed yeah. it because i you know why not why not <laughs> yeah i mean look, I, don't get me wrong i i had one here <laughs> i like the sound of it but the only the fact that i could only play four notes at a time on something that was supposed to be a jp it's a eight. miracle when i can play more than five robbie i know but look I just, I know, it, it, <laughs> and the USB noise used to bother the shit out of me. But there you go. Oh, uh, uh, RFI choke. On yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, well, I've got, the, uh, yeah, I've got little filters. So, but you shouldn't have to. You just shouldn't have to. But yeah, hey. well, indeed. The anyway, virus so was murder for that USB noise. The oh yeah, virus. Well, terrible. Oh yeah. Any, well, anything and literally anything I've had that is powered by USB. <clears throat> okay, multimedia um, <laughs> gives me that um, <laughs> that thing. <laughs> and Lord knows, oh. I have told them numerous times, and yet they still insist on putting on some of their products. Um, 
But yeah, Ju uh, Jupiter 4 uh, is available on Roland Cloud. It's uh, part of the subscription. And of course, oh, if yeah. you've been a uh, regular subscriber, depending on your level, you can then um, add that to your lifetime uh, thing. Also, worth pointing out that Roland have released a uh, package to buy at uh, 499 of their their five kind of classic ACB. So the Jupiter 4, uh Oh, what what else is in there? I can't remember now. The Jupiter Eight Pro Mars, I think. That's it. Yeah, but it's um, five five kind of classic Roland ACB synths. If you don't want to get go down the subscription route, hundred bucks each, so a pack of five. Um, they're good sounding. Uh, they're very good. Uh, you won't yeah, be disappointed. Yeah, no. But I I was looking at my account and I'd forgotten to put some. I, I've accrued some lifetime keys, so I've got about ten now. I think so. Well, I've got you're Jupiter, you're, yeah, you're accrued in. anyway. Um, wow! Wow! <laughs> what wow! Can I say he speaks the truth. Yeah, but I love the fact that you went to. They had the audacity. Like, can you imagine the meeting at Roland? Oh my God, that's audacious! That's incredible! What are people going to yeah. say? Exactly. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Well, actually, yeah. I think I think okay. it was more like I think it was more like. So, how many voices can the ASIC support? Uh, realistically, yeah. four. Yeah, well, yeah. then I guess it's going out with four. Yeah, that was the thing. And even with the Juno sixes, you know, four vo four voice Juno. You know, come on, come on, come on. Well, the alternative was not having it at all. Well, I suppose. Yeah, that's and true. And this is why we can't have but, nice things. But this is why I go for the software version because at least I get that. Oh yeah, and then you then you get to do all the creative uh, interactive sound design with like mouse. Yeah. yeah. Well. <clears throat> you're implying that i do sound design uh <laughs> <laughs> anyway um it's available now as part of the roland cloud package um lots of people like it some people hate it um but yeah it's a really nice plug-in I, I i must i've got to say this uh, a lot of people said to me why this not the cherry audio um mercury 4 which was their thing and the mercury 4 is a great plug-in especially Very at 39 good. Especially Very at thirty nine bucks. Yeah, they're, they're I did side by again. side them. I I took their factory. I, it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't a big scientific thing, but they've both got the factory presets in. So I just a b the factory presets, and they are close to each other, maybe a block apart. You know, they're they're in the ballpark, but one the the Cherry Audio ones seem to be a little bit brighter. And the Jupiter 4 was a little softer around the edges, if that makes sense. So um, either way, you're going to get a nice a nice plug-in. Um, oh. So, yeah, you pay your money, takes your choice. Roland Cloud, uh, where you can get the As Jupiter the 4 and many other things. Sure. Indeed. Um, let's do this little one. Um, I actually, I've, I've not downloaded this. I've done a Ben. I've not downloaded this. Or actually, no, Ben's downloading it and not using it. I've just not downloaded it. But I must say the um, the demo video did have me thinking. Mm, do I need this? This is from Clev Grand, um, and it's called the Phosphat. It's a transient fertilizer. Um, <laughs> bring life to your drums and percussion Oor. for a mere twenty three ninety nine of your US dollars. Um, I'm going to play the the video because it actually does uh, make more sense when you hear it. It is one of those things. Here we go. There you go, Clev Grand and their uh, Phosphat Transient Fertilizer. Uh, <laughs> comes from around these parts. Um, 
I really like what it does to the sound. And one of the things, the first things I tend to do in any any piece of music that I, I make, which is not that often, but I always go to the drums first and see if I can just make them crisper, tighter, cut through a little bit better than they are. And this seems like it's something that will really, really help in that regard, no matter what, you know, whether I'm using an electronic you know, samples or whether I'm using uh, acoustic samples or whatever. It just seems like it can really liven things up and help the drums kind of cut through nice and cleanly without overpowering the rest of the, the mix. And I think at twenty three ninety nine, I mean, it's normally 39 but it's... It, bit of a bargain that one um ben did you uh, get a chance to yes yes, yes. i downloaded it <gasps> and i have and used, you used it. it yes I, and when i first read about it i thought oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh for heaven's sake the, everybody <laughs> calm down <laughs> <laughs> this is one exactly. of them it's some kind of transient wave shaping yeah. saturation eq thing I, I, I thought that i would be able to do the same with my channel strip you know that's mm. that's kind of be preconception of it before we went in and then it, it, do you remember drummer gog do you remember that yeah. from you I, I, I remember the I name mean, i don't remember much yeah, about I it i love drummer gog it's yeah so but good. Dr drummer gog like replaced real drum sounds so like you, yep. you yeah it was a drum uh, replacement software yeah 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 well that's what this does <laughs> in a way <laughs> it doesn't replace them but it puts like look you specify a frequency say from a to b uh, and that will benefit from the the, the sine waves uh, mm -hmm. that you can you, you can trigger, you know, uh, b based on a threshold and a, and a range. And then you've got like noise effects that that come in. Like, well, it's up to you. You can have them on the low end if you want. Sounds a bit mad, but you you'd have them from to the mid to the high. Yeah, you can really like get like crunchy hi-hats and a bit more of a snap to your snare with it and also there's like a, a, a on the sine wave as well there's like a, a, a bass drop kind of effect right. so uh that pitch drop there uh you can see it there so if you have that on full it, it'll drop loads but then if you set the release quite short it, it'll do it quick you know okay. so you get like a real uh, that that kind of fast fast pitch envelope effect mm. you, you can get that on, on, on it I think it's it's really interesting. It, it, it is something quite different, uh, and it does add a lot of crunch and uh, a lot of sub. There's a lot of sub bass gets added mm. to you. Because I, I loaded up a track that the drums have been doing me head in on for ages, you know, one of mine, and, and, and I thought, <laughs> I'll try it on that. If it can sort this out, like, it'll sort anything. <laughs> and and it, sound, it did sound better. It, it yeah. sounded really better. Just just, just a, a group channel of the different drums involved. Mm -hmm. Stereo group. Plonk that on it on, on an insert. And, yeah. and I just cranked the levels up as like quite high at first and then fine-tuned my sound and then dialed it back, you know, so it sat in. Great. I, mm. I, th I think it's pretty good. I, I, and at that price as well. If you if you do struggle with punchy drums, you know you can do a lot with like transient envelopes and uh, you know shapers, waveform shapers, and what have you. Mm. But this this helps as well. You know this yeah. this really does add a punch to it. So yeah, good. Yeah, I mean good I tend to use um, like on in Reason. There's a um, a graphic EQ where you can just you know add points and then pull things up and down and i tend to sort of use that but i find yeah. that that's that's more of a blunt instrument whereas this seems much more precise yeah yeah and it's generating sound as well you yeah know? yeah so it, it's adding like, something that isn't there it, it, yeah it's something new new harmonically being mm. added in and yeah it's good it's good it's a good idea really good which one of the michaels wants to go next oh uh, well it I, off to mr whalen well i i'll Part of my creative process is I'm crazy about processing. So, like, I have a uh, a Kima system that I've been using. I mean, I, I'm like on my seventh or eighth iteration of it that I use for processing, and then I'll dump the processed tracks back into Logic, and then I'll keep going. And so, when I downloaded this, it was funny. The, my first instinct was not to put drums through it. <laughs> <laughs> but my first instinct was I I'm working on this this synth thing and what it did as a processor on the synth thing was so cool. And so yeah, I mean I I mean you know taking Robbie's point, yes, like punchy and you know whatever. And but I don't do a lot of that sort of like poppy dancey 
you know, EDM stuff. But what I really liked about it was this idea of it being kind of like a formant kind of like processor and like mm -hmm. finding that frequency and just tweaking it all the way out and getting that kind of raw thing happening that you can't really do with a channel strip. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's a very, I mean, for the price, you can't beat it. And it's, a, it, it's an interesting device to kind of just sort of throw on vocals, throw on synths, throw on guitars. I did this, uh, uh, I chopped up a bunch of like sort of very staccato vocal things and I threw it on there. It's really cool. Mm. Um, so it's a very, um, so using it kind of away from the drums could actually be useful as well. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, getting into it a little bit more. Yeah, it's, um, it's like that Manny Fernandez thing of I'm going to take this and try and break it first, do things yeah. with it that aren't supposed to be done with it. And then you can really sort of see what it can do. Um, Mike, you must have come across these guys with uh, iOS plugins and and an app. So, go on. Um, the thing about Clevgrand is that their stuff sounds uh, fantastic most of the time, but um, their user inter they've got I think two people designing their user interface. Mm -hmm. One of them. Um, worked on phosphat you know it's got some nice graphical elements it's got some uh very easy to use well labeled parameters you can find your way around it very clearly but you get something like pads or or synth you know some of their mm -hmm. some of their synth uh, uh plugins and it you look at it and it doesn't matter how good it sounds. You just look at this thing and it's like, I don't know who designed this, but I'd like to slap them. <laughs> um, and you you just walk away. Um, and I was actually, I, I was uh, very curious about this plug and I've downloaded it. I have it. It's $9, by the way, in, in the US on, on uh, the App Store for iOS. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I've played with it a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, what it reminds me of um, is, uh, you know, every, everybody has been ripping off the SPL transient designer, you know, since it was available on hardware in the late 90s. And they're really good for, for you know, for certain things. Um, but the thing that this reminded me of with the, with the sort of the tone thing at the bottom is uh, there's a, a, a very, very high quality audio, pro audio company here in the States called Little Labs. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan Little is a genius. He's a mad genius, but he's a genius. And um, Little Labs created a, uh, a, a 500 series rack processor called the VOC, Voice of God. And basically what, what this thing is, is it's a highly resonant uh, filter that centers around low frequencies. And then it's got a super, super sharp uh, cutoff above that. So what that means is you can home in on a fundamental or a subharmonic of a sound and just punch it up, which can do amazing things. So, you know, I'm, I'm in agreement with Michael here and Ben. It's, you know, this kind of a tool um, can be tremendously useful for putting a little bit of extra uh, pill pill in a, uh, in a sound. And um, the, uh, the thing about it that worried me was, is it going to be easy to use? And mm -hmm. what I found is it looks really promising. Um, and, uh, you know, I apologize, by the way, for the, uh, the slap comment, if anybody from Clev Grand <laughs> is watching this in replay, but seriously, um, you guys can look at this on the, on, on the app store. You can look at some of their plugins. They, they literally, the, the interface is nothing but hand drawn lines and circles. It's like the, it's like the stick figure equivalent <laughs> of, of a user interface. And you look at it and you go, I don't want to play this. Mm. So anyway, that's yeah, just me. Yeah. I think it's a great program. And I think for people who are looking for a way to add uh, a, a slightly more professional spin, I guess, on on their sounds, it's a it's a good place to start. Yeah. 
Yeah, twenty three ninety nine. You can't really grumble. Um, you might notice we've we've lost Mister Wayne and his camera has been disconnected. I don't know um, if he can hear us, but um, you we you've dropped oh. out of the picture. Um, so oh, no. hopefully we'll get him back at some. Oh, there he's he's disconnected. So hopefully he'll be coming back in shortly. Um, we'll talk yeah. about him while he's gone. yeah. Let's talk about it. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, can't Club play Grand, for Tuffy. Uh, in. There can't we go. Play for uh, He's back in the room, but no camera. So we'll um, add him to. The... Can you hear us, Michael? I hear you? No problem. We ah, can't see. We can... oh, oh, he's gone oh, again. Oh. <laughs> oh well. Right. Okay. Well, we'll carry on. Um, I do want to say, um, Dina, Dina, Dina Perlman's Perlman in the chat, is man. in the chat, and yeah. congratulations, yes, on your special special day, Dina Perlman. Um, she married the love of her life finally. Yes, um, wonderful, the wonderful, wonderful Roberto, wonderful happiness, yeah. which is which is why I'm wearing my ARP T-shirt. There you yeah, go. He's repping. Congratulations, yeah, he's repping. Dina. Yeah, and, congratulations. And many, Dina. many, many more years in health and happiness. Indeed, Very absolutely. Nice. As my as my mother-in-law Zikronam Livraha would have said. Till a hundred and twenty. <laughs> Till a hundred and twenty. Well, uh, yeah, so uh, Dina got married and um, she looked absolutely gorgeous and uh, Ruperto looked absolutely handsome. Stunning, stunning man. Um, we wish them all the very best from everyone here at the ProSynth Network. Um, right, Clev Grand, we've done that. Twenty three ninety nine. If you want phosphat now, it's on offer. So go and uh, avail yourself of that. Or nine ninety nine if you want to buy it for the eight, iOS platform. Eight ninety nine actually. Oh, right eight ninety nine. Oh, there you 899. go. Eight ninety nine. It's it's. Shall we? Cheaper. Shall we talk Yamaha? Well, yeah, let's, let's talk, talk Yamaha. Yamaha. Let's Yamaha. talk Yamaha. Oh, uh, by the way, Yamaha. Uh, <laughs> before we get on to this, mm. I want to slip in one thing really Ooh. quickly, as the actor hey. said to the bishop. It's um, the uh no the uh there's one more item on the news list and i want to get it out of the way because i think it's important for people to hear but this yamaha discussion might take us to the end of the two hours <laughs> it's true yeah. which is if folks don't know uh all of korg's software for all platforms is on sale up to 50 percent off yes so go to korg.com check out korg as a developer on the app store or on the mac app store uh, or, you know, just go to their website. But there's a huge summer sale going on, um, and uh, that's really all you need to know. These are great yeah. plugins, and yeah, really um, they're, you know, they're, I've got they're all, all the Korg stuff. I've got, like, the the, the collection thing and the mm -hmm. uh, Wave State and the Op6 uh, gadget. I, I've got I've yep. got everything. I, I, I think I, they make really good software. They do. I'm, I they love do. Gadget. Yeah. I love Gadget. Yeah. No, I, I went all in on the collection a little while, about a year or two ago, I think it was. It was a crazy upgrade path, and it's one of those things. That if There's one thing that's not good about the Korg software stuff, particularly... Uh, as plugins is it's um its pricing is a little high compared to yeah. others yeah. the quality is fantastic um but their upgrade path sucks i'm sorry it really sucks <laughs> because i bought full price wave station and m1 and the upgrade price was still quite high i bought a piece of hardware that came with m1 le the light edition free of charge and I got a bigger discount because of that than I did from my two full price plugins. God damn it! Um, and and wow. it's even then it wasn't particularly cheap. But I I treated my I think I got I got the whole collection for like one four nine, um, and it's worth every penny because you know some of those recreations are stunning, and of course Wave State and Op Six are now uh, native apps as well. So and they're really cool synthesizers. Oh, up to fifty percent off. Worth worth pointing out the up to part. I would like to jump in and ask Dr. Mike something, if if possible. Uh, uh, Dr. Always, Mike, always. You, you've got friends at Arturia, haven't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have I have clients at Arturia, and, and yeah. I'd like to think they're friends, but when I'm on deadline, you know, writing manuals... Uh, what, what's, what's going on with the um, endorsed MS-20 on the Arturia um, thing? My, my best guess, uh, and I do not have anything authoritative, but my yeah. my best guess is that Arturia um, put together, they, they just, these guys are not shy. They probably put together the model, they listen to it, 
And they said, you know, we think we've really got something here. And they probably contacted the international uh, uh, offices uh, of Korg and just said, guys, you know, we may or may not be impinging here, but, you know, it would mean a lot to us if we could have, you know, uh, be able to use your name. And somebody at Korg just said, you know, this is a very different machine than ours. Um, they probably said, we don't think it sounds as good as ours. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, and they said, sure, why not? Um, and th the thing is the rising tide lifts all boats. Um, and if you're, if people are co cooperate and they're kind to one another, you can actually see some really, see some really good benefits. And I will point out, and this is something, um, that I don't think is NDA. I'm going to be very careful here, but certain elements of the Arturia software um, are not branded Korg. There are elements in the software that do not have the Korg name on them because Arturia did not receive permission for those elements. And so they were very careful mm -hmm. to huh. respect Korg in that regard. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's my take. Yeah. 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 Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. It's okay. Cool. Interesting. Thanks. Right. So, Yamaha. Yeah, Let's talk Yamaha for the last half an hour. The Yamaha, Yamaha. half hour. Yamaha. Yamaha. Yeah, the, the Yamaha half hour. Um, Yamaha. Yes. Yamaha. Yamaha. Yeah. It's, like we have a, it's like we have a synth story down. in Tel Aviv. Here we go. <laughs> Yamaha. Did, did yeah. the Yamahas come? What did, uh, where are they? What are they? Come on. Hey, you're trying to do a Jewish accent. This is ridiculous. What are you? Hey. Yeah, I got I'm in the I'm I'm in the middle of New York City. I don't know anything. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it, Robbie. Go. Right. Okay. So I have been quite vocal in the past about Yamaha, um, kind of resting on their laurels in terms of Shocking. new I innovative technology. They seem to have got stuck in this rut where we've got four little refaces, which are good. Don't get me wrong. And then you have got the montage and the Modi X, which are good. Don't get me wrong. But there's nothing else. Really, there's yep. nothing else in between. Okay, of any, I, have of I have a take on this. But, um... but I've, I've long been saying, please, Yamaha, do something cool in, and, and uh, innovative like you used to do. Well, I just, some... did, I, I just did a concert where I used a GX1 and a mm -hmm. CS80 and a DX1 and a and CP80. A CP. And... Yeah. Like I, I, and I've been an endorsing Yamaha artist for 28 years and I've talked to my friends at Yamaha and I'm like, guys, I was even on a, like a thread, like an email thread for like two years. And I'm sure lots of other people were too, where they were talking about kicking the tires on possibly doing a bigger hardware CS type synthesizer. And that yeah. conversation went nowhere. Right. And um, it, it's been very, 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 very frustrating because I mean, like, you know, like if you look at the, I have I have a I have a CP88 here. But if you look at all the other Yamaha gear that I have here, it's all 30 and 40 years old, mm -hmm. like it's almost 50. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 uh, I will say, despite my relationship with Yamaha, yeah, that I think they really are resting on their laurels i think they're very much in a manage their kind of uh, their bottom line versus like innovate because when companies here let's innovate it costs money there's the r d and then it, it, kind of coming back to the conversation we had about the akai it's you know what's happening in the marketplace you know mm -hmm. is is the marketplace a 400 dollar you know, reface CS DX, you know, is at the market, um, you know, a Roland is like, okay, we'll put out hardware, but we'll do it as a boutique. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, because is that, is that people don't want to spend more than three or four, maybe $500 for something and you're done. And I, 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 I don't know. I think, um, you know, I, I think certainly what Sequential has done with the reissue of the Prophet 5, which I have right there. Um, I, I think certainly what Moog has done with the Moog 1, which is right behind here. Uh, I think I'm one of the first three people at Sweetwater to go get the new Oberheim. Um, so, like, I think there is a market if you put the time in to actually create something that is going to be a really wonderfully playable instrument. Um, mm. and, um, and I, this, 
this news about, you know, uh, the trademark that Yamaha uh, filed, you know, for this new analog thing is interesting. But I'm, I'm wondering what, you know, what it is, where is it going to go? Is this going to be a modeling thing? Like, you know, like, what are we talking about? Well, let, let's let's enlighten our viewers who haven't heard or haven't seen this. So I've got to um, give props to um, Robin Vincent over who's Molten Music Technology, whose channel is great. Go and subscribe to it um, and go and watch it after you've finished here. Um, but Robin also contributes to Sound on Sound. He also contributes to Gear News. And it was his article in Gear News that I saw the other day that caught my eye. It's kind of prompted this uh, this discussion. And the news is that Yamaha have recently filed uh, an application um, for a trademark, uh, I believe, in the United States. Yeah. And mm. let me just get the right page here because I don't want to get the wrong one. So um, this is from the Gear News website. And the trademark they've registered is AN-X. And of course, we've got a blurred image here of the AN-1X, which was one of the um, the bearers of that, or certainly you know those three letters before. There was also um, the AN-200, and there was the AN plug-in boards. Yep. Um, but uh, I loved the AN-1X. I yeah, have an yeah. AN-1X story, but it will wait. Yeah, and I I love the sound of the. I haven't bought one. I still want to get one. Um, but it's. It, I just thought, oh. Maybe at last, Yamaha are doing something exciting, and maybe ANX is, you know, that thing. Is it going? You know, we have no idea what this is going to be. Uh, we can only assume that it is going to be um, analog modeling because that's what the AN stood for before. If you look um, at the actual trademark application, it does give us a bit more hope in terms of what it's going to be for, um, because it details the, again, let me just make sure I get the right page here to share. I just worry that with the Yamaha, it's a technology like FMX or something that's just gonna be bolted into something else. Yeah. Well, that, according to this, so here is, here is the, the application from the USPTO website. And it says here, uh, registers the mark uh, ANX in relation to, uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, musical instruments, namely electronic music keyboards, electric pianos, music synthesizers. So this is definitely something to do with an electric keyboard of some description. And that's well, all we really Well, at least it's not a new know. motorcycle. <laughs> well, indeed. Yeah, yeah um so yeah i mean i don't know we're, we're, we're going to be sat here now speculating for some time the other thing that i wanted to show you was um if you then go and look at all of yamaha's applications um there are some interesting ones in there that don't really sort of lead us to it to, to much um but as you can see you've got the anx there also recently registered is vocalo changer or vocalo changer interface trans acoustic Grand Piano Craft, Listening Care. Harmonious Diaphragm is, is one that's been applied for. Yamaha I call True band Sound. name. Exactly. Uh, la <laughs> last year's CK61, CK88, and then we're getting into the older stuff. Um, so Remote look, you know, Cheerer. What, what, what was that then, Remote Cheerer? Remote Cheerer, yeah. Wow. It's, it's something that well, cheers Well, Robbie's got one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has, yeah. There, there it is. Go. There it is. So, look, I mean, we, we can speculate until the cows come home, and we often <coughs> do, but wouldn't it be cool if Yamaha were to do something a little exciting again? Well, I want to point something out here. Uh, I, have, I have three Yamaha stories, and I'll, I'll split them up so that I'm not talking for the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the 20 minutes. <laughs> but the one, that, the one that came to me was uh, I actually had this conversation with a guy in a guitar center, which, you know, the retail chain. Um, and we were looking and I was, this was years ago. Um, but I don't think things have changed much. There was a lot of cool stuff happening from Roland. They had, they had a bunch of really cool Roland boards. Um, and then they had some of the new stuff from Korg that was kind of exciting. And the Yamaha stuff were just these black slabs of, you know, sample playing with effects and whatever. You know, no user interface improvements, no this, no that. And I was just looking and I was saying, my God, how do they expect to stay in the market? 
And the salesman just smiled and he said, come over here. I'm going to show you some, some numbers you're not supposed to see. And he calls up the sales figures for the region and shows me that for every one of these really exciting new Korgs and for every one of these really exciting new Rolands, they sold six or seven of those boring Yamahas. Mm. The thing that's very easy for us to forget is that synth geeks are still a small minority. Yeah. And you know, if you're playing a if you're playing a bar gig, if you're playing with a jazz band, if you're a keyboardist with a school orchestra, if you're uh just a punter at home having fun, um I'm sorry, but if you have a choice between something like a montage and something like a uh, an op 6, you're going to be in the long line. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, I don't think it's a question of them being lazy. I think it's a question of them realizing where their return on investment is. And the other thing that people don't realize is, you know, Yamaha is is part of Nippon Gaki, which actually owns, mm-hmm. uh, I think, at least a small percentage of the of the Japanese home islands. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're a really big corporation doing yeah. a whole lot of stuff. And... Um, I don't know how much they're, I think they like to sort of dip an oar in the water once in a while to show that they've still got cool stuff. I, I'm still tempted to buy a reface CS, uh, one of these days, but you know, if they're going to do something like an ANX, my attitude is it's their race to lose. Okay. They could come out with something really cool, or it could be something that we all sort of go, you know, all the fanfare for that. Um, but I guess I have a, I have a harder time sort of looking at Yamaha and saying, um, you know, they're, they're lazy. They're, they're in so many music markets, you know, Korg doesn't make orchestral instruments. Uh, you know, Roland, Roland doesn't make grand pianos real, you know, with strings. Um, they're, they're spread out. They've, they've got an enormous amount of R and D, but you've got to ask what percentage of their market is something really new and cool for folks like us. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. So uh, you're making a very compelling point and I, I, I agree with 98% of it. But I think part of, okay, let me say it like this. I think the most important part of marketing sometimes is, is the marketing that you do sort of like the inside baseball, inside the community type yep. things. Oh, and, yeah. I th- and I think they went crazy in the 70s. And they have been living on that for a long time. And even there's people who would say, well, you know, with all the stuff with the DX was, you know, it was really popular, but that wasn't the thing that made Yamaha legendary. And so I think, and I have, I have a Montage 8 as my main controller and I have my CP88 and these things are built like battleships and they're wonderful. And, and the CSX is my, is the, my favorite piano that I've ever played in my life. And I, I, I got it, but I do think it's like Mercedes has an F1 team and the F1 team goes out and Lewis Hamilton goes out and drives the car and does amazing things. And, you know, even though they spend $400 million a year and they basically break even the amount of press and imagery Mm. and that, that aspirational, like, Oh my God, this is so cool stuff is literally priceless. And I think in the environment that we're in right now, we could use some of that. And I, and I think one of the things that happened when Dave Smith died was Dave knew all about that. Dave, I think, was a guy who was like very much like a very practical, pragmatic guy and a guy who wanted to dream. And I think he had a very good handle on both. And with him gone, like, does that mean that Sequential is just going to just sort of like knock out things that you've already seen before and there's going to be no innovation. And so in that case, is there going to be no one in our universe that's innovating, that's pushing things out, that is challenging us, that is taking things to places that hasn't gone before. And Yamaha, like you say, is like a enormous 
tiny division of an enormous, 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 huge multinational corporation. But these guys have got resources that they haven't touched in decades. And yep. it would be really, really, really interesting for these guys to take out some of the technology that they have complete access to for, out for a spin and said, wow, you know, what if we could actually just completely like upend this part of the business. And the reason why we would do it is because we're going to be living on that reputation for the next 25 years. Well, I agree with 98% of what you just said. <laughs> um, the, Touché. Um, Touché, sir. Well, Touché. well, no, no, I'm serious. You, you make a really, really good point. Um, I will say, however, I do not believe sitting here with my hydrosynth right next to me, I do not believe that the death of Dave Smith spells doom for real innovation in keyboard synthesizers okay. i think that dave i think that dave inspired an entire generation um you know there are companies that i think are choosing not just not to go there but going in wrong directions people that we have a lot of respect for who are really just they they're showing that they don't get it anymore and i won't mention names or even do like the cough thing because you know i i'd like to keep working um <laughs> but as long as we've got companies like asm and modal uh yeah. and now arturia with their hardware division you know as long as we've got folks like that we're gonna be okay that's that's my opinion um okay so uh second yamaha story um I owned an AN1X for quite some time. Um, I got it for practically nothing because uh, the previous owner was a, uh, a guy who has released some albums um, on, on respected labels, but he wasn't always the smartest guy in the studio. And when he set up the AN1X on top of his A-frame stand, he didn't realize that the uh, the standing lamp that was next to it, because it was halogen, uh, got really hot. <laughs> so when I bought this AN1X from him for like, I don't know, 20 cents on the dollar, I named it Lumpy. <laughs> because because Lumpy worked perfectly, but the entire left side of Lumpy was, well lumpy <laughs> and and when i sold lumpy i sold i sold him to a very dear friend of mine uh in denver who still has him and lets me play him once in a while um the same friend is uh, uh an amazing collector actually and and a great keyboardist uh the, my last yamaha story is actually in his house um in his living room uh, he has, you know, piles of electronic gear that he's working on and this and that. And if you dig down, you're wondering, how can there be a pile of gear that's seven feet tall? And you dig down and you realize that these piles are sitting on two B3s, one of which is disassembled, and somewhere in there is a CP80. Mm -hmm. So if you dig down through this pile, you eventually get to an electric grand piano, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. Not as cool as that Strandberg guitar that Michael has behind him, but still cool. <laughs> Everyone just um, calm down, okay? There's a lot of talking going on right now. Of course, we, we have our resident Yamaha expert in the chat, Dr. Manny Fernandez, uh, another doctor Hi, in the house. Hi, Manny. Hi, um, Manny. Did you know quite a bit of the AM1X uses uh, FM physical modeling math for a number of analog behaviors? There you go. That would that. make sense. I that did not know that. Was Dave cool. Smith it, it, working at Yamaha when he brought out the AM1X? No. Was it, was it? That, was, that was after. Was it? Yeah. Um, not long. Not, not, yeah, not a huge amount yeah. of time after. So it was. But, but the AM1X was, um, it wasn't a copy of, or it was an homage to the Prophet 5's uh, architecture, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, a, yeah. it was an analog m modeling synthesizer. It's in synth gems because I think it's a beautiful machine. Mm, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it can be kind of a pig to program on the menu level, but mm -hmm. so many things are brought out to where you can get at them easily. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's got the aftertouch. It's got the assignable ribbon. It's, it's a fun box. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yamaha in the 90s. I mean, Mike, yeah, Mike said about Yamaha in the 70s being that, you know, they're, they're real kind of, big period and then of course 
the 80s was all about FM. And so there were, it was just FM and, and v- variations thereof um, until they brought in, you know, the, uh, the PCM samples in, things like the S- uh, SY85 and so on. And then, of course, the 90s, you know, started, started to become this kind of rompler thing and they had lots of workstation-y type things. But also they did have, to, in the mid to late 90s, um, the AM1X. The CS1X. The CS, well, the CS1X, 2X, and 6X. most importantly, the 6X, which is, yep. is just a fantastic thing. The, the um, FS1R. Robbie, do you and, have an FS1R? I do. And, and you know, there's, there's a machine. That's a silly that, question, Mike. That's a silly, I, silly I question. Know, I oh, know, my God. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't know what came over me, Michael. I, 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 I apologize. Uh, but, I mean, there, there's, okay. there, there was a crazy synthesizer, the FS1R, that was um, made in a 1U rack mount module. That With was, a little tiny LCD. <laughs> like, yeah, like painting the Sistine Chapel through a letterbox. And the... Ship in a bottle, baby. Yeah. But such a such a powerful synth and i i believe i think i think it might have been manny that that told me this that the the kind of the the thought behind that was that it was going to have a computer editor and that was how you were going to control this so that's how you're going to dig into this but the 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 stock editor didn't really uh amount to much and since then other editors have, have appeared and, and have made it easier to kind of get into that forget thing. the two ronnies meet the two mics yeah quite um <laughs> It's but, my birthday yeah, I mean, today. What what a powerful really? what machine year? that they haven't ever exploited since. I mean, well, they brought when they brought the Modi X out and and the or the FMX engine within Modi X and uh, Montage. It was eight operator FM like the FS One R, but yep. was missing the eight um, uh, non voiced operators that gave us you know the whole formant stuff, the the formant shaping, which is what really makes the FS One R quite special because. If I roll through presets when I'm showing somebody, you know, what this thing can do, the patches that get the most, ooh, are the ones that employ the formant shaping. And nothing yep. has really done that since. Yep. Yeah. So they're, they've got this technology, um, it, but they're just not using it. Well, and, and the thing about Yamaha in the 70s, uh, this, is, this is, again, some synth gems lore. Um, they were a home organ company because yeah. in the seventies, home organs, and, and it isn't just home organs, organs were everywhere. Uh, yeah. uh, are, Michael, are you, are you of a generation like I am to remember pizza parlor organ? hundred percent right there with, you. you know, you go to a pizza parlor and you've got an organist playing requests and just doing silly shit while yep. you're, pardon my French, while you're, <laughs> while you're eating your pizza. And, you know, it was a big deal. And the reason why ya- and Yamaha was fighting companies like Hammond to get, you know, market share. And so they threw money at that. And that's the thing that people don't remember is that the GX1 was supposed to be an organ. It was a flagship mm. organ. And the fact that it was using analog synthesizer technology, which was unlike anything else before or since... Uh, including the CS80 to some extent. Yep. Um, it, you know, people tend to forget that. But, you know, Yamaha shipped these things out to, you know, organ competitions. And, you know, the big names would buy them. And, uh, you know, and there are many, 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 many GX1 stories. But, you know, people tend to forget. It was the home organ market. They, mm. they, it wasn't just great technology that they were going to dine out on. It was... This is a market that we have to clobber. And I might add the DX7 was exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. The DX7 was we've got all these punters who are out trying to play gigs and they're sick and damn tired of carrying around a Fender Rhodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The end. 100%. Yeah, the, the, oh, the, the, I got the last two percent this time. No, 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 I, I, no, it's great. I, I know, I, no, no, because I, I, you know, as a guy who just spent uh, nearly a, an entire week kind of put together with a GX one, it's a, it's an organ, and, yeah, and it's it an organ with synth technology under the hood, but the the user interface on it is. You an better organ. be thinking. You better be thinking organ, because if you think, "Hey, this is just a big CS80," you're going to be 
badly, badly, badly disappointed. And, you know, and Mike is exactly right. I mean, that technology came out as like the nuclear weapon of saying, hey, we have all this new voice technology, these analog circuits, and we are going to do things with this organ, this electone organ that we've created yep. that no other organ can do. And yep. so, uh, so like people like, you know, John Paul Jones and Keith Emerson, whatever, sort of pushed it to the synth side of the street. But it was made as a performance instrument for organists. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and a lot of that technology, you know, we all think of the CS series synthesizers, 50, 60, 80. But a lot of that other technology filtered its way down. And, and you know, and, and in addition to that, there were some... There were some really interesting experimentations. Most people don't realize that the the GX1 was the first programmable synthesizer, and yep. it was programmable before digital. It was yep. an analog programmable synthesizer. You would take one of these cartridges and plug it into a machine, and you and it had trim pots in it. And you would tweak each trim pot until you got that element of the sound the way you wanted it. And then you'd pull this thing out of the machine and you'd plug it into a gigantic bank of sockets inside the top of the GX1. And, you know, uh, Gordon Reed, who, who, you know, has written a great deal about it, says, you know, you've got more programming resolution than any digital programming system because these are trim pots. So you can get your sound exactly the way you want it. Mm. Uh, the, the machine is just unbelievable but and everybody says why don't they make a new one have you ever looked inside one <laughs> they're oh my god oh my god oh my god looking just looking at one panel like at me app we took off one panel and we looked at it and i was just like you better put that panel back on right now because it was like <laughs> ah! exactly you have heart yeah. palpitations because you're like you're afraid to breathe because, yeah. you know, there's wiring harnesses and cables and these yeah. hand-wired circuit boards. And you're looking at this and you're going, how can it even stand up by itself? Yeah. Much well, I mean, less the thing make that's, sound. The, the thing that's amazing about the GX1 and the thing that is the absolute knockout punch for Mike's argument about it being an organ is there is no audio output of that machine. So the only way you can get sound out of a GX1 is by plugging it into its speakers. End of story. And so those speakers I, and those speakers are unbelievable. They're unbelievable and they're huge and they're loud the, and whatever. Oh, but the God. only way the only way you can get sound out of that machine is by plugging it into its speakers and then you mic it and there you go. So like when we did it at Emmy, we that. had we had to push the speakers off to one side and then mic them all by themselves because the ambient sound from the speakers was kind of getting all over everything else. I was oh like, God. ah! Yeah. Oh, God, they're unbelievable. I mean, Gordon yeah, they're Reed, unbelievable. you know, he, he wrote about how when he, he, he let his, once he got it, he let the temperature stabilize. But then finally, after a couple of weeks, he had, you know, he had to know. And yeah. so he turned it on. He turned on the two speakers. He had two of the three. Um, and he pressed one note. And apparently they were getting police report complaints from like a mile away. <laughs> it, was like, uh, it, was, it was like my resident filter at that gig. They're monstrous. They're, and, yeah, yeah. and the thing is, people are and, and people are now saying, you know, well, why don't we have one? Why don't we have one? And the answer right. is there's, you know, I don't know if it's really worth all the R and D to try to model all that stuff with SMDs. Mm. Because yeah, nobody I, 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 I mean, honestly, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, I mean, the thing that's shocking about the GX1, and I, I would like to think that I'm a pretty good sound designer, is it's actually not that flexible no, in terms it's not. of creating. And in terms of creating sound, it has it has a very definite sort of sound character to it and you can tweak it to a point and you can put you know the portamento on it and you can do some stuff and you can do the vibrato with your hands and you got the yeah, thing it's, and it's, you got it, but and it's that's all it UI. it's all ui yeah the, the, the totally. basic sound the basic sound is is fairly straightforward it is uh and and you know but my god that sound yeah 
it's it's you it's know. enormous and it's wonderful and it's whatever it, but 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 i but the thing is is that i think you know, all these conversations about can we go back to the cs80 and can we go back to the gx1 and can we go back to this or that and what you know even all the all the freaks on reverb who are or who are all trying to sell their dx1 for a hundred and thirty thousand dollars or whatever I, I, the one thing I will say is I think Yamaha has done a very good job of keeping their eye on things like, yes, yes, let's try to keep this at, to as many people as possible. But mm. I do think that they would be very well served by taking a flyer and saying, what if we gave this one sort of R&D group like uh, money and three years and what could they do? What mm. could they do that would like and they'd bring something there back is, and there and, is and, that. Yeah, there so, is that. So let, let me throw this in because um, we're going to have to wrap up soon. But let me throw this one Why? in. So um, Roland, instead of doing hardware reissues of their classic stuff or even uh, homages, modern day homages to their stuff, went Roland Cloud. They licensed, they, they got a third party company in to develop Roland Cloud and do all of those instruments. Yeah. Um, Korg have. I think kept it in house. I I believe I might have. be wrong, but they're doing they they're like okay you know we're still doing our our workstations and we do some cool new stuff, but if you want MS twenties if you want M ones or wave stations or whatever we have that but it's software. So the it begs the question why haven't Yamaha done something like that instead instead of you know pandering to people like us and saying yes yeah, let, let's have some classic. Uh, or exciting new synthesizers. Why haven't they gone down the software I, route? I think they've missed a trick there, actually, yeah. because because they own Steinberg, don't they? So imagine if Cubase was the only software that had like the official CS80 software version I'd kill. in it. it, it <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd ignore yeah. it. Yeah, but it, it it'd be a real plus. It'd be a real feather in the cap, wouldn't it? And but the fact they own a company that designs software, it's not like you know. Mm. They could use Steinberg. I don't know what Steinberg do in the in the realm of software instruments over and above things like Halion and uh, not, they've got a few other yeah, things. But not, not much, that, is there? They're not that great, really, no. in the plug. But it's, it world. wouldn't be a stretch yeah. for them to expand that part of the company into developing software plug-in instruments. And so we could have that GX1 plug-in. We could have an official CS80 or DX1 or whatever in software um i'd actually rather say obviously things like cs80 dx7s and all that they've, they've been done uh pretty much by most Many, companies uh, let's have yeah, the sy2 you know the sy1 the sy2 let's have those early you know the cs15s the cso1 you know those things that people would really i think i don't know uh, I'd, I'd, I'd also, buy those. a lot of it also is that um if you think about a certain level of technology as basically bl being the playground, um, what you end up with is um, there's a certain level at which a company has to be in order to be able to afford to play. And the, the price of the playground uh, has come um, way down over the decades. Mm. You know, nobody but Yamaha could have built the GX1. Yeah. Yep. There was no other company building musical instruments in the world that had that kind of resources. Yep. But today, with modern manufacturing and modern, modern hardware, you have a company like ASM, which can produce, you know, I honestly consider the Hydrosynth to be the modern classic. Mm -hmm. I think it's the machine that everybody's going to be complaining that nobody's making any more of 30 hmm. years from now. Yeah. Um, and, um, I'm, you know, I, th I think that nowadays where we see the playground happening is with these small hungry, uh, companies or companies that are still small enough to realize that they got where they got with innovation. And mm. now, you know, it's, it's worth dining out on that and, and going places with it to some extent. Um, you know, when a company gets as big as Yamaha, they have less reason to poke around in the playground and they have to think about all of their audience. I mean, they actually came out with some pretty cool keyboards 
over the last yeah. few years. Really cool keyboards, actually, but they're for a different market than us. Yeah. They actually made a Vocaloid keytar where mm-hmm. you could actually play notes and 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 you know have the thing sing in Japanese. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, um, but you know, yeah. it's but it was a consumer product. It was, yeah. you know, 150, 200 bucks, and you can't get them in the United States, which sucks. Mm. Um, and, and uh, you know, but they, they, they know their markets. And yeah. I think what they, it comes back to does Yamaha look at us and say, you know, is it worth what Michael was talking about? Is it worth giving people an R&D budget and letting them just go wild and yeah. seeing what happens? And yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's, you know, I'm not an expert on corporate courage. I, I don't know why people make these decisions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so we can hope. But, I, you know, or as, as Pete Hine once said, we can only hope. But we let's not only, only hope. Yeah. 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 Now, it's interesting. And uh, I remember seeing some videos uh, not that long ago of um, these organ playing competitions in Japan where some of the electone style organs that they're producing today, these th- you know, triple manual with foot pedals and everything, are, I mean, just mind blowing the stuff that's coming out of them. It's so authentic. And it's one usually young girl playing this stuff and just go like this but it's just fascinating and they have these massive competitions don't they? yamaha run and sponsor these massive organ performance competitions it's a real big thing over in japan and like and, you say and it, and it used to be a big thing worldwide yeah the whole yeah. reason that emmy app ended up with a gx1 <laughs> is because it was it was used for the annual yamaha organ competition right. for the australian division it was one of yep. two that were abandoned and yep. gordon reed ended up with one and the other one ended up in Emmy app, which was sort nice. of a, a, a an interesting thing. Yeah. But yeah, the, it's the Tyros range as well, which you know the, their yeah. Arranger keyboards are just, I mean, stunning. I've I've seen and heard some of those things, and I'm thinking, oh, what's that? What's that? And then you see it's got speakers in it, and ah, oh, it's it's one of these Arranger keyboards. But you know, well, you know, speakers speakers aren't automatically a bad thing. No, um, you right. know, the reason why the the Roland HS60 uh, isn't you know as expensive as a Juno. 106 is because people don't realize that all it is is a Juno 106 with yeah, speakers. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got a friend who's got one of those, and I call it his Bon Tempe because it you know it looks like. One oh of those yeah, things. yeah, they're no, they're great, but the fake wooden cabinet. Yeah, yeah, and the and the music rack. You got to have a music rack. Oh yeah, it, I've got one. Have it's, it's more than just the speakers with that though, isn't it? Because there were, wasn't there a Juno 106s or something? Yeah, there was. Also and the, the, the HS60 had a, had an audio input, so yeah. if you were playing with your family, this and this was 1981, you were playing with your family, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you could run a mix in and hear electric instruments through the speakers along with yeah. the sound, which was actually what kind did, of fun. What they did, though, I think they, they really missed it, was they, they used, like, curly fonts and stuff like that, and, and, <laughs> and synths curly were supposed fonts. to be modern. They weren't supposed to have scripted fonts on and stuff. Yeah, they were supposed yeah and to you know light. what? Thank God for that, because now we can actually still afford to get original Roland hardware at least once. <laughs> yeah. so, I saw oh, an, actually saw an HS60 up on eBay um just the other day and i think it was about 800 pounds which you know for for for, if, for vintage roland is not bad at all yeah yeah um, um oh and by the way uh synthetic um no i am not going to talk about my career as a nuclear physicist i was I'll just, just about say, to yeah I'll just, just i'll just say that um it walking away from it saved my life probably physically and mentally um it was it was not a good time and um, I could tell horror stories about my time doing physics research. And but thank just, you for the five bucks. But thank you for the five bucks. Oh. And you're going to have to bribe me with a lot more. There you um, go. <laughs> There's you incentive. Know, I, could, I could tell one story that would convince you guys of why I don't do this for a living anymore, but I don't want to darken an otherwise beautiful <laughs> conclave of dear friends. As we say at work, let's take that one offline. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. just let's just yeah. set that one aside and let it let it clabber for a little while. So on that note, um Yamaha have registered a trademark for AN hyphen X. We know nothing more about it except that it's to do with K 
keyboards and synthesizers, whether it will actually come to fruition, whether it will be a thing or not. I, I guess, you know, Yamaha aren't the sort of company that will just do, you know, register a trademark and then not do anything with it. So who knows? We'll see. But we'll keep an eye on that one and report on it as and when. But uh, I do need to say again, a massive thank you to Robin Vincent and the Gear News team for breaking that story. And that's where we got the information from. So thank you guys uh, for that. Right. Um, I think it's about time we... Uh, we called it a night, I think, because I, I need the little boys room. And as you, and, know, as you and see, I'm jiggling. The, the only other the only other topic, <laughs> the only other topic we have uh, is is Max. And that would get us going. For oh, no. We, God yeah. knows how long. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's true. I think it is time to bid everyone a fair adieu. Indeed, yes. indeed. Yes. To you it's been and lovely you talking to you. And you, you, and you, Michael, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, yeah, Michael and Mike. Thank you ever so much for coming on at what was sure. relatively short notice. I really do appreciate. I'm always um, glad to. You guys know stepping you can up. always. You guys can always count on me. Well, thank you. It's a, it's an honour. Michael, great to see you again. Yes, I, I, thank you very I much. Hope not to see you for a little while longer now because I just well, you know, you're always here. You're always in my room. All right, everyone, just, just calm on. down. Okay, so just there you go. <laughs> and by the way, there is a Yamaha CS. 6x on reverb for 599 get it that's a deal i got my i got mine for 375 which i thought was a good deal and then i've thrown the vl card in there as well so it's a really nice everybody before we sign off just a couple things first of all thank you for your support please don't forget the donate button especially if you're watching this in uh uh, delayed uh and like and subscribe please like and subscribe um because that really helps us the more subscriptions we get uh you know the better the better it is at keeping the lights on um and uh you know i'm just going to put in my my vote for somebody to buy a crate full of those pro synth network uh clothes and shipping them to the states for redistribution Uh, because i can't afford 70 dollars to get a shirt yeah yeah we Um, all right i did get a hoodie i did get a hoodie as well so everyone just calm uh, down Okay. Well, I, you know, I got, I actually, I did a book signing at the Moxeum. I've never done a book signing in my life, but yeah. I went to visit the Moxeum for the first time uh, in Asheville and mm-hmm. it just, and I was, and, and it was just funny, you know, I walk in, it's like, hi, you know, um, just looking around, seeing the displays and, you know, and it was just like, my book is on the shelf in the shop. Yep. <laughs> and, and, you know, so I, you know, and before I know it, the, the guy who runs the Moxeum has me signing a half dozen copies. He's tearing them out of the shrink wrap. And, Very nice. Um, nice. So that, and I bought a couple of, you know, my, my contribution to the Moog Foundation was to buy a couple of very expensive hoodies. But, you know, yeah. I got to walk out with them. Yeah. So, I bought your, I bought your book at the Moxeum in December for the uh, board Michael? Meeting. The, so, so everyone just um, calm down. Yeah, Mike, Michael, I will yeah. be, if all goes well, I will be yeah. in New York City in October. Yeah. I would love to take you out for a meal, and I will sign it for you and lower its value by 20%. <laughs> <laughs> that is so and if, great. I really appreciate that. Well, Thank you. That's, 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 take that's, some pictures. That's nice. Michael's collecting um, visitors at the moment because I... I yeah. Like Michael oh, with our friend look, Drew. 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 Yeah, Hi, Drew. So you know, it, was yeah. great. it was great. Drew invited himself to my studio and said, hey, and I'm like, well, OK, I've been weird about COVID for two and a half years. Let's see what happens. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you get you're still here. You're still here. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm good. It's all good. Brilliant. Gentlemen, thank you. Um, also, if uh, for anyone that hasn't already watched it, um, please do go and check out this live stream or recording of a live stream uh, from Mike Wayne and his imaginary trains performance at Emmy App with all of those wonderful synthesizers, including Keith Emerson's Moog Modular, as well as the CP80 and the CS80 and the DX1 and how many mini Moogs? There was there four, uh, three. There's three. three. It's, uh, three. There was a there's a re- there's a Luxury. reissue. There- there's Bernie Worrell's Mini Moog, which is absolutely ridiculous. And there's an RA Moog, which is serial number 16, which is just, it was just beautiful. It was just so yeah. much fun to play that. Got two here. Oh, oh look, look. Yeah, right. There you go. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Ben, oh, it's, ben. The co- it's the collapsible one, yeah. Oh, yeah. hug those Mini Moogs. I love that. Oh. You can lift the back up, right? You know. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> That's so Don't nice. encourage him. Don't oh, encourage exactly. him. Um, yeah, but yes, 
you can go and see Michael's video. It's on YouTube. Just uh, search for Michael Whalen's YouTube channel. Uh, the link is actually in the description below as we speak. So please do go and check that out. It's fantastic. Yeah. And really good quick reminder for mm. everybody, radiospiral.net, um, yeah. bukes.com. And if any of you ever have a question or want to talk to me about anything at all, mike at bukes.com. I'd love to hear from you. There you go beat me to it um now don't forget that. yeah don't forget um tomorrow we got ranzi uh, around midday or one o'clock i can't remember wh when the actual show starts somebody in the chat i'm sure will say uh ranzi and then uh Lula May and her and Lu yeah dom and luna may on sunday after jamie also on yeah. sunday um and then hopefully we'll have um, our kent back next week so kent if you are still watching and you haven't passed out on the sofa um feel better soon come yes. back and yeah. um yeah we Cheers, miss you mate. yeah absolutely gentlemen it's been a pleasure and an honor thank you ever so much Robbie, great, thank great you fun. and thank you michael great fun great great thank fun. you thank you All guys thank you and yeah, i'm really happy you. the helicopters are not outside anymore so thank they've you. stopped thankfully yes okay. so um yeah have a great weekend everyone <gasps> oh, um oh oh, oh, what oh, oh, oh what happens when the noise stops Base solar. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention. Uh, I forgot to mention. Um, there is an event going on in, in Cambridge tomorrow in Cambridge, uh, UK. That is, um, and it's called Synthesized, and it's happening at the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Uh, it's a little bit kind of tucked uh, behind, like an industrial area, but it's a, a brilliant museum of, full of vintage computers. But for the next two days, starting tomorrow, it's going to be full of vintage synthesizers. Um, I'm going to be there with a Fairlight, uh, potentially an Emacs, and my Yamaha VSS200. Because I thought, well, if you're going to have a Fairlight, you might as well have a Yamaha VSS200 there as well, from one extreme to the other. So I'm going to be taking that. Um, the, the wonderful Paula Maddox is going to be there with some of her stuff. Um, Sol Paul Selsby from Selsby Synthesizers. Chris Strellis is bringing a whole bunch of stuff Ooh. down. Um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> Centre for Computing History. Uh, just Google that, uh, Cambridge. If, and if you can make it down, it's fan it's a two-day event. Uh, there's even a live performance on, I think, on the Saturday early evening time uh, in the venue. And then their own collection of loads of great synthesizers. So come and uh, – oh, there's going to be an 808 there as well. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So please do uh, come and see I, us. I have some late-breaking uh, news. Oh, go. Uh, I, I bought the Yamaha. <gasps> oh have fun yeah. with it yeah. michael they're great machines they're great <laughs> machines. live on the show <laughs> listen i once i i i knew the internet had made it when i did a live concert and one of my players on stage when he had a, a down period between two songs got online and bought a piece of gear that someone else on stage had that he'd taken a shine to. Oh, so and good. And came That's back in so time good. for his guitar solo. So good. Okay, well. All right. On that note. On that note. <laughs> yes. Um, have a great on weekend, everyone. We will see you, you all at the same time next place. Uh, who have we got coming up next week? Oh. Ben, someone tell me. Uh, oh, uh, God. Oh, uh, maybe, God maybe himself. God. Uh, God will be on speaking. What, Hans? Hans Zimmer. We haven't actually got anyone at the moment. Oh, oh, oh right. Okay. The week after, we've got Christine Anderson coming on, and then a couple of weeks after that, we hope to have a very special show. Details coming soon. And on July 29th, we've got uh, the wonderful Dina Perlman, um, and then Mel Wilson after that. So, yeah, lots of good stuff coming up. So, yeah, stay tuned. Cool. Subscribe. Everybody stay, everybody stay safe and well, okay? Yes, absolutely. Super. Enjoy the weekend. If, Super! Uh, Fantastic. Take care, everyone. See you all soon. Thanks, Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.